waiting for Rudy to arrive. Um, uh, you guys can bring your hero points on your sheets back down to one. Um, but as is per usual, whoever does the recap for the previous session gets to give themselves an extra one. So, I know we didn't go through much last session, but hey, humor me anyway. <laughs> I mean, I think we got a simple answer to, you know, what happened last time. The whole party pretty much said, let's commit fraud. <laughs> wow. That <laughs> That's not we, the well, only thing. Correct. That's, That's not, not the only thing. That's the most important thing, right? We floated it. Yeah, the idea was floated. The majority okay. of what happened yeah. was that the party uh, made their way out of HQ and found, found, someone, found some information and... Uh, got onto the list of people who were associates of someone in the relic dealing business. After some expert negotiation from Rudicorn and DG, of course. Funny. And then the party realized that they had the tools to destroy the world's economy. Yes. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, potentially. I mentioned this before, but I did, I did kind of look it up because I wanted to see how badly you guys could fuck things up with the whole, you know, financial fraud stuff. Um, apparently, it's actually not that bad because. Uh, <laughs> you, you know how it happened, like, what, not even a year or two ago, a couple of banks collapsed in the U.S.? Well, yeah. uh, I looked it up, did some research. Um, in Canada, there's protections against that. So, like, even if uh, a bank goes under or if a bunch of people were to withdraw uh, all their money or, like, drain the banks, uh, there's protections against that. And then uh, casinos are the same way. Casinos have some protection if they get stolen from, or um, you know, a lot of they end up paying out a lot of jackpots. So there's actually protections in place that prevent the casino from going under or completely bankrupt. So we won't break the economy, but can still get lots of money. No, you can still get a lot of money, um, and it wouldn't crash the economy. So yeah, you know, you're, nice. you're fine. We can stay. We can stay undetected. <laughs> So, with that in mind, um, I, and basically the whole premise of the ca campaigns right now is get X amount of money in order to be able to bid on this crazy powerful artifact. Well, with that in mind, I have made the decision to remove any limits on the amount of gold that you can earn. So, <laughs> I know I'm going to regret this, but okay. So the way Pathfinder works is that there actually is a table telling GMs how much treasure, money, and permanent magic items you're ideally supposed to have at each level. Um, so that way a GM can figure out, okay, how much should I give out in terms of rewards? Uh, I am going to be completely ignoring the gold cap <laughs> in that regard. So, you want to earn millions of gold? Go right ahead. I'm not stopping you. Because, again, uh, the main limitation will be on what you can buy. So, uh, like, yeah. you know, you're, you're not going to be crazy overpowered. I'm allowing you to buy literally anything within one or two levels of your character. So that way, uh, you know, you just, won't be just, buying just like, a level one. 20 sword. Don't go two. <laughs> <laughs> don't go, don't do too. Too bad. That's how we end up with. Uh, then again, we can't go striking such early because we're using auto progression. Yeah. But, so, yeah so we could get like an astral rune at like level four, and that's. Don't do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can do Alex. Infinite scrolls. Yeah, now that we can do rather yeah, easily. Yeah, consumables is pretty, you know, pretty tame. So I'm not really right. as concerned <laughs> about that. All right, 100 scrolls of fairy fire. Fuck concealed. Yeah. 
Now, I might limit you in terms of quantities. I will roll for it. So, like, if you want, like, a dozen of a particular scroll, eh, I might look at you a little weird. I'll say it's doable, but I'll, I'll have to roll to determine how many you're able to get. I did this with Regenesis, too, because um, supplies were supposed to be a little strapped. So... I essentially rolled for how much was available or if it was available at all. So anything beyond one level higher than your character, I will have to roll to determine if it's there and if you're able to get it. But otherwise, you know, if you want to buy it, you can just simply buy it. Oh. Hmm. Wait, so, wait, wait, who told me what the recap was? Because you're supposed to get an extra hero point. It was me. <laughs> okay. That was me. Give, give yourself an extra hero point, Alex. Um, so, since Starclad's not able to join us today, I did bring him up to speed about the party's potential plans last time. <laughs> of course, I'm as on board with any... Uh, potential financial fraud shenanigans... Uh, so, off screen, I will be helping with that or trying to scam some poor schmucks into very, very poor financial decisions. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, Sounds great. Yeah. So, that is where we're at right now. You managed to obtain one of those auction tickets from Mr. Del Mar. Um, and, uh, we didn't get the fiscal ticket. Yet. <laughs> Not yet. No. He'll be providing that to you later. Um, however, hmm. You guys did come up with a couple of different options for what you wanted to do. So, okay. Just to go over uh, and make sure I got everything. So the uh, the different avenues that you could pursue that you went over uh, was potentially impersonating a buyer uh, or let's see the other was impersonating the security detail for the artifact uh, let's see uh, stealing the artifact outright killing or impersonating the errant group or just you know committing lots of fraud and getting lots of money <laughs> money, money, money. Yeah, so so those are the various options that you came up with last time. That's not the be all end all. Uh, but, you know, those are the things that you can potentially pursue as of today. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unpause. There we go. So you guys are just hanging out in the casino. Mr. Delmar is over here enjoying the smoke, enjoying whatever show is going on right now. Mm -hmm. You guys are just over here. We're going talking. through a treasure box. Yeah, going through the treasure box. And Gonzo is over here just kind of tenting his fingers and being somewhat mm -hmm. antsy. It doesn't seem to like being this exposed. Doesn't he can really hide like on the table. He yeah, he <laughs> he slinks under the table a little bit and remains in the shadows. Seems a lot more comfortable there. Also, didn't he give me a file? <laughs> oh yeah, file. I... What file did he want? Remind me again. It was the relic history of Tortuga. The relic history of Tortuga? Okay. Didn't we discuss this? I don't remember if we discussed this. I, don't I think asked we... him to fetch me things of, uh, <laughs> for info uh. about, you know, possible similar relics to what we could be trying to find. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no. I remember that now. Uh, so, Gonzo, being a really kind of tiny rat person, does not being does not like being in the sunlight. He's more of a bookish type, kind of like you, Finny. And he scrambles under the table, cowering from the lights. Hey, hey, hey. I don't like being up here. To open. No. Well, you can go back down. 
after you, you give are me free. When you I are free to leave, once you get what you ask for. Sniffs at you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot about that. And he fumbles around his belongings for a little bit. Hands you a folder. Finny. Yeah, yeah. Finny grabs it. Squints. Aim. He's gonna look at it. Uh, is that everything, boss? Yeah. That should be all. You can go now. Okay, good. Uh, you need more. You know who to call. Yep. Uh, okay, I go now. Just kind of poops or pops underneath the table Oops. somewhere and just <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> not in here <laughs> yikes I I speak English today. Fuck me. don't poop under the table that's bad manners you can't oh. do that here I think I got here at the right time hello <laughs> yo god damn it shit <laughs> See, these are the issues I have with language. I speak. I am a native English speaker. I don't speak any other language other than English, but I still butcher it horribly. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's because <laughs> you're speaking gremlin, folks. It's I'm character. speaking gremlin, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, Gonzo just scurries under the table and disappears into the shadows with a pop. Pop. He's gone. <laughs> he does not poop under the table. He may be a rat, but he doesn't do that. <laughs> Don't leave droplets under there. That's gross. Yeah, it's on brand. <laughs> Freaking rats. Anyway, um. All right. So the file that you had Gonzo Retriever for you this is on relics found around Tortuga. So. Um, just to give you a little bit of history, Tortuga is the way it is because it's um, a common travel point between at least like three or four different continents. It's in the middle of the ocean, like almost dead center. So it's a popular waypoint for trade, travel, uh, but also about a hundred years ago, uh, it was a very good staging point for the Mage War. Um, and it was fought over and exchanged several different times between several powers, uh, which caused a lot of devastation and didn't do very well for the locals. So the seas around Tortuga and even the islands themselves are littered with all sorts of artifacts, both historical and the more magical kind. Um, so. Relic hunting has been a popular occupation for at least a couple of decades. Technically, you're not supposed to be looting what's considered war graves, but the areas around the wrecks themselves are considered fair game. And some more unscrupulous individuals and organizations who are more willing to skirt the rules will violate that and retrieve whatever they can find and get good money out of it. Now as for more magical relics as opposed to ones of historical value, um, Tortuga has a lot in terms of magical artifacts. Um, most of them, not really anything of note. A lot of errants in the area will be carrying like little trinkets of magical power. But the only thing that you're able to find um, in regards to something on a grander scale, there's only really one or two that come to mind. And the documents that you've retrieved only seem to support that. Okay. It is more than likely something to do with one of the gods. And the gods associated with the islands in particular, Salisea, of course, the goddess of the seas, Zephyria, the goddess of the winds, uh, and Archiver, the god of knowledge. 
uh, and then higher than that, um, and this is only speculation according to the papers, perhaps Galileo, the god of space. Intriguing. Yeah. Yes. But anything regarding artifacts about the god Galileo, uh, Galileo there's surprisingly little uh, because most records regarding the god Galileo were lost during the God Wars 2,000 years ago. Well, that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. The papers tell you that there have been rumors for a long time that an artifact of Galileo was lost somewhere in the vast seas around Tortuga. But no one really knows. Hmm. Maybe, but... Hmm. Definitely need more information. <laughs> I can confidently say that whoever we are finding has to do with the gods. That's for sure. Hmm. So yeah. You just have to go out and explore to find out what this thing is. Makes sense. Information on new information on new things, especially such as this, but won't come easy. But first of all, um if we're gonna be traveling, I think we might need to uh Get you a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? You're kind of, uh... Your presence is... Fearful to most, I think. So... Well... If this unit... Is anything... It's inconspicuous. Did you know that there are vending machines present... In 80%... Of the countries of this world. And how many are in Tortuga? One. <laughs> <laughs> you see? I don't... I have to agree with Finny here. That doesn't sound... If there's only one vending machine in Tortuga, then that's... Pretty conspicuous. Don't you think? Well, especially when it's one that can walk and has arms and legs and a giant gun. Not that that's well, out right now. Well, Handler, this unit doesn't think. It calculates. And right now, this unit's calculation is that whatever you say, this unit is obliged to follow. So if you feel that it's appropriate to get a disguise for this unit, there's no argument here. Let's do it. Okay, Feeny immediately walks up and he puts a scarf around him. The big, the big statue. That's great, Goff. No! Oops. I'm, honestly, I'm pretty sure we can just uh, say that he's a test product. And we're looking to uh, gather some information. It'll about, uh, yeah. It'll still attract, it'll still attract too much attention. Yeah, fair enough. So it Feeny... may be, but not as, it may be old, but... Still not stuff. Still not stuff that's generally seen around the world. So Finny is innocent. gonna try and uh, wrap this scarf around him and, and activate it. <laughs> <clears throat> um. So, <laughs> describe to me how you fasten the scarf around this big, blocky vending machine. <laughs> That's gonna be difficult. <laughs> no, no, I, I want you. I want you to tell me how you do it. <laughs> okay, he fashions it like a like a sh like a sh sash around the arm. Nice. Okay, that works for me. You, he just wants to see what happens if he activates it on a vending machine. <laughs> 
So the masquerade scarf allows you to cast illusory disguise. Um, so uh, illusory disguise essentially disguise self lasts for an hour. Um, but the thing that you dis uh, disguise yourself as same body shape, roughly similar height and weight. Um, and you can become nearly anything, but not a particular individual. So, <laughs> how would you like Grave to disguise himself? I just look like the rock. <laughs> like Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Johnson? <laughs> big and tall, and like. <laughs> oh you know, no! So hot. hot. He's hot. <laughs> <laughs> you are now Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> I don't think it disguises it like voice or anything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, so you still have this you are strange, an, you are titty now voice. An, you are now an animatronic. Congratulations. Oh god! Like a fucking, like, like, phone speaker. Congratulations, you have become FNAF. He literally is an animatronic now. Oh no. Yeah, he Shit, is. Shit, to get quirky no, at no, night. Freddy Fazbear. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, just... up to, it's, up, it's up to Finny what Grave looks like, because Grave has no idea what the fuck's happening. So. <laughs> True, yeah, right. you can choose. Yeah. Why is this on me? Uh, <laughs> hey, you're the one that put one. it on him! <laughs> I know. That's, yeah. Okay, so Finny... His idea... Of like, you know... A good, I guess, disguise. He thinks of... He thinks... You know what? Maybe an orc would work. <laughs> okay. Perhaps. Oh. <clears throat> so, I guess you instruct a grave, or I guess you influence the scarf to make grave look like a big, bulky orc. It's the best disguise you can think of. <laughs> Just Dwayne the Rock Johnson, but orc. Okay, yes. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Which I think is pretty much just Dwayne the Rock Johnson, just with like Snaggletooth or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's go yeah. into that. Grave, you are now Dwayne the Rock Johnson, but orc. Wow, that's a cool trick, Handler. This unit has never felt more biological. <laughs> Study it while you can. Now, this thing doesn't change him completely. I go up to touch the the, the rock orc. So, um, oh, and I so. assume I'm feeling metal. <laughs> yeah, you feel metal. Um, what's weird though is in front of you, you see a normal humanoid shape. Kind of top heavy, very bulky and muscular. Um, but when you reach forward to try and touch it, your hand stops just short of the leg or torso or whatever you're reaching mm. to, to grab and hovers there in midair, and you feel metal. And there's a weird sort of disconnect in your brain. You know that this is an illusion. But what you're seeing and what you're actually feeling don't quite match up and causes some weird kind of mental dissonance. So, fun fact! In Pathfinder, um, illusions can be disbelieved. Um, so, if you're not sure about what you're seeing, uh, you can Marco. actually roll will saves, I believe. I think it's will saves to disbelieve. Yeah. Um, not too dissimilar to... It's not too dissimilar to 5e. Yeah, it's just, not too dissimilar to 5e. It's just, um, if you Similarly. suspect if you suspect that there's any illusions going on, you All can right. always just roll to disbelieve uh, and see the truth. But yeah, this is just a weird example of that. So yeah, 
you know, it's still metal. You're not feeling any kind of flesh anywhere. It's just, yeah, it's still it's still a vending machine, but get too close and the illusion sort of falls apart. Okay. Just gonna hope no fangirls touch his muscles. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> this will be good. We just gotta make sure nobody tries to shake his hand or anything. I mean, you can just give off his most standoffish approach ever and maybe no one will approach him. Oh. This unit could try. Take the Wayfinder for the time being. There. Unfortunately, oh. this unit is programmed to be as friendly as possible. Well, that's, uh, nice. Bit it is, isn't it? Rather amusing <laughs> for an assassin vending machine. Well, look at it this way. There's nobody in life you should get closer to than the person you're trying to kill. <laughs> eh, you have a point. Uh, I don't see any bad logic in that one. <laughs> Speaking facts. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Ocho, do you want this gold and these potions in here? Uh, how do I open this up again? You can oh, double, double click, click it. it. Okay, oh, double click. before we continue any further, I forgot. Um, because I'm using the Starfinder 2E playtest material, um, oh, under yeah. proficiencies, computers and piloting have been added to the proficiencies part of the sheet. So I've already given Vang, um, Hexa, computers by default, like, you know, for free. Um, oh, so talented. If, yeah, so if any of you want piloting computers or driving lore, I will give those to you for free, but you will have to level them like normal skills when you level. So who wants to be the party wheel man? <laughs> who wants to drive cars? To... <laughs> Hope you all got your licenses. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I, I gave Pent driving lore. Um, that's specifically for road vehicles. Uh, piloting lore is for anything that's, you know, not on the ground. So aircraft uh, and okay. watercraft. Those will be uh, for piloting. However, okay. if you do take piloting lore, I will have to ask you to specify a vehicle type. Because planes are not like helicopters, <laughs> and they are not like boats. <laughs> they are very different. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows how to drive what? Now we ball out on the submarine, bro. <laughs> submarine control. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, okay. I feel um, like it's reasonable to have Grave do computers. Yeah. I mean, outside we also of like have... many, I would think most characters here have a justification for having computer lore. Or yeah. Computer. Uh, it's definitely not hacking. Hexa with hacking. As jockeys. <laughs> Ocho and uh, I've forgotten his name. <clears throat> I'm. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. Right, Half so of our party are literal desk jockeys, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> All right, so I'll give Grave Ocho and I'm the computer skill. Uh, so you'll all start off trained in those completely for free. Um, so you you got a bunch of people who can do that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so many people who can do computer. But also, yeah. the investigator is just gonna be better at it. And then what a bunch of fucking nerds! <laughs> right, <laughs> a bunch of nerds. Um, oh my god, this is, this party is gonna be proof that uh, desk jockeys are actually gonna be kind of terrifying <laughs> in a campaign. Yeah. Instead yeah, of beating people up, oh hey, um, 
We've got other ways of dealing with stuff. Oh, do I grow? There's a reason the why we. <laughs> There's a reason why they stick us on the desks. It's because we're we too just good at our jobs. IP address. <laughs> I just drag it to me. Uh, to my... you, you you open your inventory and the box and you drag it over. Gotcha. So nobody wants the piloting skill. <laughs> I, I'm I'm saying that Finny does not. Well, Stephen, I'm saying he doesn't know about computers, but I haven't decided quite yet on piloting like, or driving. <laughs> I was talking to Alex <laughs> earlier. It makes sense for Pent to have driving lore because he's a spy, but he's not a super spy, <laughs> so no piloting. Yeah. <laughs> driving, I, not piloting. I'm tempted <laughs> to. Okay. I'm tempted for Ocho to have it simply because former millionaire, he probably did some really stupid shit, like bought a plane or something and piloted himself. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say I'd be proficient in that. <laughs> well, the problem he bought, is... The he problem buys one is, but never flies it. Yeah, yeah buys one never flies it. The problem is, um, if you got piloting lore, I think you'd actually be really good at it. Hang on. I, you would actually be really high up there. It'd be your highest skill. <laughs> oh my god! I'm not even joking. Because your you your highest it. your highest skill is thievery, which is a plus six. If you become mm -hmm. trained in piloting, that's also a plus six. <laughs> that's up to Tempting. you. Well, you can decide later if you want it. Um, but I'm I'm allowing you to have it for free if you want it. So. Okay. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, Finny's from Albion. He he doesn't he doesn't drive. He walks everywhere. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, I've taken the gold pieces and I've taken the potion of emergency escape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. And um, the spacious pouch, in case any of you are wondering what that is, it's pretty much just a bag of holding. And mm. in Pathfinder, yeah. there's several different sizes. This is just the first size. Although, so basically, yeah. if you think you're holding a lot of stuff, you might want to grab it. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I've never really needed more than the Type 1, even at, like, level 6 or 7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... I do have, uh, what is it, the the hauler? Yeah, hefty hauler. Hefty hauler, so I can carry more than, like, yeah. my normal weight. So. I have no strength, so I can't carry much, so I could probably grab it if I wanted to. Yeah. Hey, let me carry more tools, if anything. <laughs> I, feel, I have a feeling that, like, most of what we're going to need in this is going to be tools to use. Yes. <laughs> or just a place to store our uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we could fit bodies in this bag of holding. <laughs> Actually, True. yeah, you can. I mean, you can stuff a living thing in there, but it won't be alive for long. Dead mm -hmm. things, you can just cram in there. They're just items. Disposal. Yeah. <laughs> Disposal. Yeah, also honestly. Also, folks, can you move the mess crate star to uh, Graves' inventory? Oh, yeah, sure. Hang from on. mine. Also, I apologize for being late. That's uh, fine. I'd, I'd went to the grocery store, and on the way back, the light next to my house had, like, gone out, and they were trying to fix it, and it took a while. Nah, no worries. <laughs> All right, uh, masquerade scarf has been moved to grave. Actually, um, is there any form that you'd like the scarf to take other than a scarf? Oh yeah, you can change the scarf. Yeah, you can change. Form. You can change the scarf's form. Just an armband to bandana. <laughs> bandana on this machine would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it so is, hard. It is a bandana, so I will change that masquerade bandana. <laughs> This just sounds go. funny. Boop, there you go. Boop. Alrighty. 
Well, we're not that, so. Okay. We're not that, so. <laughs> if we want to start making money or something. Yeah, what would you guys like to do now? Yeah. I know last time we talked about, or at least I talked about for me, trying to find where, uh, trying to find previous uh, auction places and then trying to find a pattern, see if we can figure out where the this next one might be. Ah, okay. That would be a quest but, for Del Mar. Say that again? Okay. That might be a question for Del Mar, if anything. That's not a bad place to start. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like literally right over here. Steps on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Crawls under tables because you're small. Oh, yeah. Scamper <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it just crawls under the table. Hey, Del Mar! Del Mr. Del Mar glances up. <laughs> Puts out his cigar in an ashtray. Huh? Oh, back for more, are ya? What can I do for ya, buddy? What can you tell me of uh, previous auction places? He <laughs> stares down at you, lifts an eyebrow. Oh? You really don't know? And I thought you suits were supposed to be knowledgeable in these sorts of things. <laughs> I'm in the office all day, real busy. You know, I don't get to go out too much. Mr. Delmar makes a face. <laughs> uh, really? Oh, that's disappointing. You're really missing out, buddy. Well, strokes at his chin and leans back against the couch as he thinks for a moment. Well, most run-of-the-mill artifact and relic auctions take place here, in uh, Grand Tortuga, mostly. Because, hey, when the country is known as a place that you can buy and sell anything, uh, the sort of transactions bound to happen, especially in the artifact markets underground. And um, he leans forward a little bit and flashes you a very wolfish toothy grin. Uh, now for the more high-end stuff, well, that's a very different market, you see. All these small-time artifacts and relics. Any old errant with enough spare change can buy one. You know, magic items aren't exactly a rarity in these parts, especially in the errant circles, but uh, items of this caliber, you have a much higher caliber of clientele. Millionaires, I can imagine. billionaires, yeah. businessmen, you know, people with lots and lots of money to burn. And as he says this, he lifts his hand and makes kind of a, a gesture with his fingers, like sifting through bills. Ultra just nods his head. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, okay. Now, those artifact auctions... Mm -hmm. They don't take place here, they're usually offshore. That amount of money and the quality of product being moved, it's not exactly something you want anyone getting a hold of easily. Plus, a lot of these items are, you know, um, kinda illegal to even possess, so, uh... Yeah, you, know, you gotta, no. gotta, gotta keep your uh, bases crazy. covered there. Yeah, I know, right? So, most of these rich bastards will come together on their yachts, on private jets, and whatnot, and take off to 
usually a designated place in the middle of the Triton Sea, or one of the islands further out, away from prying eyes, and not easy to get help if shit goes down. Makes sense, yeah. But, the places usually change, but Shipwreck Cove, one of the islands further east, common place for people to gather. If not, usually a little bit further north into the Triton Sea, a little further out from the coast. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh... I think that's what I was looking for. Well, I hope that helps you. But until we know the actual location of this auction, uh, better hope you have a boat. Oh, I'm sure we have a boat or two. Maybe. <laughs> he starts thinking, going through his head, like... Did, did we have a boat? Did I'm approve a boat? Wait, um, hold on. Actually, <laughs> um, what skill would be appropriate to roll here for knowledge? Um, <laughs> so you can either roll lore suits, which you all have, or lore society. Both of those are the same, but lore suits will have a lower DC for you if you use that. Okay, yeah, I've got lore suits, so I will. I would hope you have lore suits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I... Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. You can hero point that. Do you have a hero point? You can use that. <laughs> you could reroll that, yes. Uh, Sure, yeah. I will use the hero point. Uh, do I just reroll? Uh, right Oops, click uh, and right... reroll with yeah, hero right -click point. It. Yeah. Right click the roll itself. That's right. Ah, there you go. There we go. Much there we go. Better. That is a success. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, considering the suits have their hands in a lot of different illicit businesses and practices, it comes as no surprise that the company does have a couple of vehicles at its disposal. Uh, however, one of the big ones, known as the High Roller, uh, which was a luxury party yacht that traveled between Sheridan and Tortuga frequently, uh, was one of the assets that was seized and lost during the incident about a month ago. Mm. Okay. I'm lucky. Is yeah, which is probably why the higher-ups are a little <clears throat> concerned about recouping their losses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, however... We're currently um, missing a boat, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're currently missing a boat. However, um, some of the other... Uh, some of the other agents in the ranks do have access to their own... Uh modes of transportation. So, for example, you know that Hannah Jewel, the Ace of Diamonds, she does have her own personal fleet of stuff that she uses for smuggling. But that's her side gig that's not really, you know, <laughs> on the books with the company. Mm -hmm. Um. Plus, I have a feeling she just would not let us use that. Yeah. Actually, you know, you I'm gonna I'm gonna roll something real quick here because I mean you, I mean, you could you could do a little bit of diplomacy, you know. Nothing yeah, you could do style. that. I'm also gonna roll and see if Ocho actually still has some stuff in his possession uh, yeah, among sure. his assets. So let's hope you roll lucky. Hmm. Not quite lucky. Let me think. Did all this well, stuff get taken? Most of it. You know, he did yeah. hide some things. So, you do recall that you did have something of your own back when, you know, you still had control over your fortune, but 
Uh, most of your vehicles, along with almost everything else, were seized back when you were recruited. Um, but you're fairly sure that one of your old boats is probably in lockup somewhere within the company. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you could find it, you could probably grab it. But, you know, nothing's stopping you from just purchasing another. You don't think that they're that expensive. <laughs> think. Yeah, think being the operative word there. So you have a choice. Steal from your company or buy a new one. <laughs> I, mean, we, I, mean, there's no, I mean, there's nothing saying we can't steal money from the casino. By laundry, That's not true. laundering. <laughs> we use grave, and then we buy a boat with that money. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. We're just we're we're not stealing the money. We're borrowing it. We'll give it back to the company. I mean, <laughs> if all goes well and we get this relic, they're going to owe us a lot, anyways. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay, I think I've got on what I need then. Thank you, Delmar. Uh, we'll see you later. Mr. Delmar nods at you as you go and relights his cigarette and stuffs it in his mouth. And continues watching uh, the mm -hmm. pianist on stage. I scoot in between Graves' legs and just, like, <laughs> get back in here. Well, um... One of the most likely places to find the auction site is going to be either a shipwreck or one of the empty islands. So we're going to need a boat. We're going to need Fun. a boat, huh? More likely than not, yeah. I'm pretty sure we have a big boat somewhere. Oh wait, we lost it. <laughs> yeah, that got that got that got swept up in the uh, quince, coincidence, as I'm not going to refer to, refer to it as. <laughs> that sucks. So we will need. Besides, I don't think even if it was still around, I don't think the higher ups would approve its use for such a needs to be covert operation kind of big it is quite li it is a cruise liner party yacht not cruise liner oh well same difference <laughs> <laughs> they're both a giant fucking boat that crosses the ocean So that's so one we will thing on our list. That is one thing on the list. We will have to acquire one somehow. I do have a boat somewhere. Uh, the suit's locked it up somewhere. I'd need to look for it, but we could absolutely borrow that if we find it. Borrow. Nice. Borrow, yeah. But yeah, well, would be the first thing I've bought. Wouldn't be the first time I've borrowed something from someone, and certainly me neither. Yeah, that's right. Certainly won't be the last. All this stuff in this box I borrowed. <laughs> that's, that's nice. Real. Let's hope. Let's hope HQ doesn't miss it. I think the next thing I'll list I would want to look into would be. To see if there's anyone big in town who wants to seize this thing as well as us. That's not bad. a bad idea. No, it's quite an excellent idea. Might be a time to take a, tro take a stroll around town, see what we're up against. Sounds good to me. Alrighty. So, anywhere in particular you guys would like to go to dig around for information, ask people, eavesdrop, uh, shake people down. Well, for that, I need to open the map. Yeah, I'm gonna open Las Palmeras. Oh, eh. 
just gonna move you guys all over here for a second. Eh. Just, you know, seeing where we're going, kind of important. So, um, there's a couple different places that you guys could go. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna have you roll for this because you guys are locals. You, you'd know the good information spots. I'm not local. I've only been here like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, aside from Mr. Del Mar, who's you know, pretty pretty good for information and all things uh, illicit. Um, could always <laughs> uh, tap a couple of dirty cops in the police department and uh, coast guard and whatnot. Uh, there's the shipping yards all the way over here uh, because people are always moving things in and out. Uh, you could also, you know, hang around the tourist areas uh, because although a lot of the local gangs and criminal syndicates don't really uh, you know have a lot of activity in there they still have eyes and ears all over the place uh, of course there's your own casino you yep. have your own uh, network of informants there's Club Calypso where's the nightclub uh, where, of course, a lot of illicit dealings happen. Uh, and of course, there's the whole errant's quarter where most of the adventurers kind of do business, stay, uh, you know, or relax. Adventurers like to talk, like to gossip. There's always no shortage of rumors floating around. Always a good source for information. Uh, in particular, uh, there's a popular beachside bar called the Sea Shanty um, that a lot of errants like to frequent whenever they come back from a job. There's also like a really, really small uh, marina out that way where uh, as the boats come in. Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like me some seaside, you know, relaxing. Uh, where would the corn spoke be locked up? Um. We need to find that. <laughs> I don't, I don't think we know where it is. <laughs> the best. That's true. The best. Her... Actually, you know what? I will have you roll for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> either either suits roll or uh, suits lore or society. Holy crap! Why am I confusing ours and L's today? All Where right, do I have. Um, I don't have three. I guess we could all roll this. Yeah, you can yeah. all roll it. Oh yeah. I got a sixteen. So. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to roll or nah? <laughs> what are you rolling? Oh, society. Yeah, suits lore or society, whichever one is higher. Well, I am not very sensible, I'm cheat. so. <laughs> See, he's gonna cheat. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoa! Wow. All right. Oh. Not too bad. Not too good. All right. Also so good. if you rolled. <laughs> Damn. Oh. I okay. was gonna Ooh. say, if you rolled Ooh, 13 roll or higher, you'd know. Uh, with Finny, that is a crit success. So, um. Crazy. So, for. Uh, I'll address Finny's last, but for the rest of you who rolled, like, higher than 13, but not a crit success. Um. So. Company vehicle lockup, like, for general use, is usually underneath the casino itself. So. In one of the floors above the lobby floor where you guys are, uh, there's access to an underground garage, and then for the aquatic stuff, it's below the lobby floor, which is more for um, you know, submarines, boats, etc., or anything, or hydrofoils, whatever, <laughs> things that travel on water. Uh, and then aircraft stuff, that's, you know, 
um, further out towards the airport. Of course, you can't really keep it uh, in the casino. Um, however, for stuff that has been mm, repossessed, um, but not really for company use, uh, Finny, you know for a fact that when it comes to acquiring assets, it's not a good idea to keep all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Um, so the suits like to spread things around a little bit to avoid arousing suspicion. And of course, where else would be the best place to keep something hidden than right out in the open under everybody's noses? And uh, for something like Ocho's boat, for example, the best place to hide it and have it seem normal would actually be the marina. Especially the Sol Island marina. So there's a lot of boats going in and out, a lot of pleasure vessels, so you know, stuff for just going out for a day trip, sailing, catamarans, uh, on, you know, luxury yachts, private yachts, um, fishing boats, uh, you know, stuff like that. So. This would be the best place. It's public, uh, public access. People just kind of pay to keep their boats uh, moored for however long. Take them out and make sure everything's good. Um, yeah, it would be the best place to hide something gotten illegally or repossessed, <laughs> and um, no one would be the wiser. I do think that. Possibly the best place to leave a boat of that, of that, I guess, caliber would be on the marina itself. It's a good place to store your boat when you're uh, coming back from a mission and all that. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just sitting out there. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some, you know, some pretty rich people looking for some artifacts, maybe? It is a touristy area. That's a good spot to start, yeah. Yeah. Also, we can set up graves there and just have them uh, try to take people's money. Sounds like a great plan to me. <laughs> If he's the only vending machine here, sure, they'll be thirsty. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I guess I guess the party's deciding we want to do that, Fo. You want to go to the marina to hijack a boat? Well, <laughs> hijack you know. a boat, see, see if there's see any. If... Go ahead. Well, we're okay. Yeah. Main thing is we're gonna look for Ocho's boat. See if it is there. <laughs> Okay. And also gather information. All right. Uh, so let me bring this up. This map is going to be probably a little big. One moment. Give me one moment to prepare. Boop, 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 boop. What the hell are you guys? There we go. And we can just have Grave get passive income. Easy. Passive income. Sweet, I actually had. Damn it. Sorry, one moment. <clears throat> mm -hmm. This NPC does not have art. One moment. What the heck? <laughs> they have art, like in other places. Hang on. Sorry, one moment. Let me just. Uh, uh...
don't think my token thing is working right now. No, it's not. Okay. <clears throat> the thing that I usually use for making tokens is not working right now, son of a bitch. <laughs> so, Things anyway, are broken. I, it's not broken. It's just I wasn't expecting this NPC to not have art because I have the... Oh, what was it? The Bestiary token package for Foundry? Mm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to have uh, artwork. There we go. This is, you need the Borkening. It's not the Borkening. Shut up, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, da -da -da -da. Sorry, this is scuffed. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> we. Rename that. So, when we set up graves to get that passive income and potentially still credit card information, do we have them run around as the rock or do we just. <laughs> Put them as the, the, the vending machine. The rock wants your secure social security number. <laughs> the rock approaches straight to the frame person and says, You crave the grave. This <laughs> is assuming that the rock is famous in this world. <laughs> that there's an orc named the rock. Yeah. <laughs> I would not be surprised. It's just ROC though, because it's orc like put in a different. Yeah. Oh, that's oh my god, that's, that's best. Up. That's the best. <laughs> I love it. That's, and it's, that's the best. And it's and it's legally distinct. And it's legally distinct. <laughs> yeah, this so you're you're, you're, you're the world rock, world. but it's ROC, and you're just an orc. <laughs> that's the best. Sorry, I just need to fix this token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you crave the grave pulls of soda out of nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> just like one of those, those like all timey creepy dealers where they open up their gigantic like uh, jacket. And there's just a bunch of like watches, except in this case, it's a bunch of sodas. <laughs> you yeah. want to buy something? <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so I got I got the token now. Uh, there we go. So, do I have you guys here? Oh. Yeah. Tropical music. Okay, it's time to load new map. Woohoo! Almost sounds like we're having a beach party. Ooh, it's our beach episode. So hard. Like beach episode. <laughs> Alberta. Beach, uh... Oh, it's Ragnarok online. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm Canadian. I can never see Alberta as anything other than rocks. I know. So we arrived at the scene, but what do we see? All right. So, how do you guys transport yourselves there? Do you go by car or something, or take an Uber? <laughs> oh Uber. shit! Wait, Jesus hold on. Christ. How do we get grave around? <laughs> you, you know what? I get like some. He just weird... runs next to the car. <laughs> <laughs> Bro is secretly a transformer in disguise. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> He can transform into a car easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, vehicle mode. <laughs> Real Decepticon type of shit. Oh my yeah. god, yeah. <laughs> like, I get some sort of sick pleasure in asking people, okay, um, how do you guys transport yourselves to this location? 
<laughs> and then listening to everybody try and figure out, okay, uh, how do we get here? <laughs> I mean, at least all... Regenesis is easy. We have a sports car. <laughs> Blew <them> out. <laughs> yeah, surely we all have sports cars, right? Yeah. I don't That's get a out bunch. Much. You know, we're doing all this, like, criminal shit and everything, talking to people, but there's, like, 30 minutes in between where we're just on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just total Pub silence. Public Honestly, transit. It's the fucking... <laughs> it would be, I feel like, the safest option, especially considering, like, transporting graves would be kind of difficult because of how big graves is. Well, so... grave, doesn't, grave doesn't have to pay a, fa a fare, because it's an object. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just kind of lugging around this gigantic, or this big uh, vending machine, and so, like, if we brought it with us in like this, you know, the the uh, trailer kind of trucks, I feel <laughs> like it would bring more attention if we just like wheeled out a vending machine. <laughs> and I actually think it would like be less conspicuous to, like, take the subway. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking too hard on this. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, just just the, the solutions are always really, really funny. <laughs> because I expected this, you know? Like, okay. It might be funny to figure out how the party navigates transporting this giant vending machine character. <laughs> But they're supposed to be really covert. Uh, the other thing I will note, the masquerade scarf only lasts for an hour and it's once per day. Ah, uh, okay. Wow, yeah. oh, there you go. Well, so it covered the commute. It covered the commute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it covered the commute. We, we can, and then we can have an in vending machine mode here. Just, you know? Yeah. That's actually not a bad idea. Alright, so you, you guys just commute over on like the, the tram or trolley or whatever? Mm-hmm. Alrighty, so I will describe your little journey. <laughs> Do they have jeepneys in this world? Um, it's Tortu- Yeah, you know what, I'll say they have jeepneys. Right. Okay, for you guys who don't Fuck know what a jeepney yeah. is- <laughs> Real Filipino shit! Yeah, real yeah. Filipino shit! <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know what a jeepney is, so- um, during World War II, there was a lot of leftover military vehicles that, the, particularly the United States, just kind of left in the Philippines. Um, among them were like these really, really uh, kind of crappy jeeps. Uh, and military jeeps are not like the jeeps that you know now. No, no, they're really, they're much smaller. They're lighter. They move faster, and they're kind of shitty. Uh, and uh, in the Philippines, they repurpose them for means of public transportation. So they function like buses and taxis. Um, mm. So a bunch of people just cram in their like, sardines and they go very, very mm. fast. <laughs> yeah, and we they're usually we decorated very colorfully. It's kind of neat. We deserve it. After they bombed the shit out of Manila, we deserve yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a, a little bit of history for you guys. And they're a common yeah, sight in the Philippines. Um, other countries have similar things. I forgot what they're called. I swear, I watched something where they were addressing what they're called and I forgot. There are mm. places like Thailand, um, and Africa, and I forgot what they're called. But they're very similar. They're, they're like scooters, though. Uh, but okay. other things, they have jeepneys. Uh, so they look like buses or jeeps that have been repurposed and repainted for public transportation. Yeah. Okay, um, cool, cool, cool. So, <laughs> and uh, Tortuga would be kind of like one of those places because, again, it's a chain of islands that kind of got, uh, you know, occupied and uh, handed around, invaded, blah, 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 during a period of war. So, yeah, they'd have stuff like that here. So, uh, <laughs> your commute over to the Sol Island Marina is um, a rather interesting one. Uh, instead of taking any company vehicle or anything that the suits might have in the garage, you guys decide to take the ever inconspicuous public mode of transportation, which are essentially jeepneys. Now, for most of you, and especially Ocho, it's 
not that bad of a ride, you know, you managed to cram yourself in there. Um, however, for Pent and especially Grave, transportation is not nearly as comfortable. Grave being as large as he is and Pent with all the tails, um, a little squished. Uh, Grave being <laughs> a robot doesn't mind. Pent, uh, your tails are a mess. They get stepped on, squished, e mushed up. Oh no. Uh, like, it, it is so uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, and you constantly have people <laughs> brushing past them or stepping on them, and you're pretty sure you, there's t tufts of fur missing in places that you're pretty sure weren't there Fluffy. before. Yeah. Um, and of course, being a tropical climate, it is hot, there's zero air conditioning, and it kind of smells a little bit. It's not that long of a ride, but it takes... it seems like it takes a lot longer than it does. Uh, when Grave gets in the back of the cheapney, the whole thing just, like, dips. <laughs> yeah. You're not sure if it's rated for something to your weight. It definitely isn't. Uh, and, yeah, you guys make it to the marina without much incident. You do get a lot of stares, though. Uh, again, pent with the tails and Grave just being as big as yep. he is. But nobody speaks up. We just... I mean... Eyes subverted, pretending not to notice anything. They never um, seen a Kitsune? <laughs> I mean, Kitsune are... I wouldn't say uncommon. People have seen Kitsune. Uh, but one with nine tails? Oh, that's a little unusual. And plus, they're big. They take up almost as much space, if not more, than Pent himself takes. Without the tails. So, like, Pent takes up about Big as much tails. space for two or three people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you guys make it to the marina without much incident. It's not quite the last stop on the trail, but one of the last stops. So the jeepney is not nearly as packed as it was when you got on. And again, mostly tourists. And as you get off the transportation, you end up on a very bright, sunny boardwalk. It is middle of the afternoon, it's bright, it's sunny, you can feel and see the waves and the ocean further. Technically this is supposed to be on the north side, not the west, so just pretend it's going north. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fine. And, there, and there's people around, there's people heading towards the docks on whatever transportation they are for their day trip, or mostly coming back from their day trips, having mm -hmm. left earlier in the morning. And it's bustling. It's busy. Uh, Ocho, do you happen to remember your uh, boat's registration? Oh boy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, yeah, totally. Ocho would have seen this boat like maybe once or twice. He totally would not have remembered the registration number. Yeah, besides, it's like a I usually... bought it and I used it once and I forgot about it type yeah. of deal. And usually, you know, you pay somebody to take care of that crap for you anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of millionaire Ocho would have been. <laughs> Not a very responsible one. <laughs> Not a very <laughs> responsible one. Or we just have to eyeball it. No, no, no. I totally remember what it looks like. It starts walking off in a random direction. Uh... If we are going to set up graves... Let's... Can we move to somewhere where there's like... Not a lot of people and then try to set up graves before going? Or do you want them to walk around with us? Hmm. Are you asking Kobe that question or all of us here? Yeah, to everybody. Okay. Just... Hmm. I mean, Grave is just following you guys right now. Fuck okay, it, we ball. Let's go. Alright. 
Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Also, <laughs> funny you guys mentioned a Filipino campaign. Uh, one of my other countries is actually more based off of the Philippines, which is Bisaya. Which one? What? Bisaya. <laughs> that's, that, that's the one that's more based off of the Philippines. Wait, so. oh, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> that oh makes more my sense. God. I didn't, I didn't even catch on to that when I was going through the list. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> uh. I'm gonna roll lore suits just to see if Ocho does remember anything. For okay. uh, like the registration yeah, the boat. and stuff. Does he yeah. know his boat registration? Um <laughs> Or even what it looks like. <laughs> you definitely remember what the boat looks like. Uh you didn't really have it customized or altered all that much from factory um, mm -hmm. settings or whatever. <clears throat> Um, however, you're fairly sure the suits probably changed the license and registration because it's not yours anymore. <laughs> True, yeah. But you'd be able to <laughs> identify the boat if you saw it. Okay. Maybe. I mean, the fact that you didn't customize it too much from factory, eh, there's a lot of yeah. boats here. <laughs> Alright, so also would... you, you you might actually do you remember what you named it? Because hey, both gotta have a name. Uh oh god. <laughs> uh hmm. He would have named it re something really dumb. <laughs> something really stupid. Something really dumb. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe would have been playing something to the equivalent of Animal Crossing and hey, named Animal the boat Crossing. that. The Creature Animal Crossing. Yeah, Animal Crossing's not bad. I play that from time to time. Hmm. Yeah. Name the boat Creature Crossing. Creature Crossing? Alrighty. Yeah. So Creature Crossing is the name of your boat. Alrighty. So yeah, um, Ocho, you're pretty sure that the suits would have changed the license and registration and ownership because hey, it's not yours anymore. Uh, it belongs to them now. Um, <laughs> however, you don't think that they'd have changed any of the paint scheme or even the name because, you know, too much trouble, and they're fairly inconspicuous anyway. So, if you can find a boat by the name of Creature Crossing in the marina, it would be a sh it would probably be likely that it's yours. You know your boat, okay. probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, turn to Finny and say, if you see a boat, it's called Creature Crossing. It should be on the side. Uh, that's my bow. Creature crossing? Yeah. That's the best thing you'd come up with? Shrugs. <laughs> Go that way, core name. It starts walking down this way to the docks this way. Bloopy just melding with the water? Yes. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, Bloopy is uh, having fun in the water. Yeah, Finny. Bloopy is just playing around in the water, and you notice that over time, Bloopy starts changing color from a pale blue to more of an aquamarine. A tropical blue. Yeah, and it's starting to gather bits of sea foam uh, along its tendrils, so it's a little bit foamy now. It's faulty. Yeah, I like salty. salty. I like this. Yo, oh. <laughs> Yo, is that Alolan Bloopy right there? Alolan <laughs> <laughs> Bloopy. Uh, but yeah. Do I see any of the boats that match that name? That's a lot of boats to go through. It is. I'm not... <laughs> Look, I'm gonna zoom out. There's like a crap ton of boats. <laughs> You're good. It might be better to ask the harbor master. 
Or, you know, any other living being on this pier that isn't us. True. Anyone important looking here? <laughs> that might be in charge? <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, look, there's a person walking toward oh, us. Hey, there's a person walking. Should we shoot them, smiley face? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it out loud. Don't say it <laughs> Do you crave the grave? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> not yet, grave, not yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll see. Does this person look like uh, they'd be a boatmaster or somebody who keeps track of the boats? So, the person that's coming down the dock right now um, seems to be dressed in uh, captain's attire adjacent. Not quite. They have the shoulder pads and the pressed shirt, but not the hat. Um, and they're, they seem to be carrying what looks like an electronic ledger in their hand, and they're going through it right now. You could reasonably assume that they're the harbor master. Okay. And uh, as they walk down the pier and turn this way, you actually see um, Soul Island Marina Harbor Master printed on the back of their coat. Ah, excellent. Okay. I'll try to like, try to catch up to them. Excuse me. will turn around and because you're short her eyes <laughs> go to meet somebody like same height but then she <laughs> stares straight ahead and then notices you down here nice oh uh hello i didn't expect to see you there uh what can i do for you how can i help you uh you see i'm looking for a boat i was supposed to pick it up uh, make sure everything's ready. It, it's called the Creature Crossing. Lifts her ledger and starts going through the tablet, scrolling through it. Frowns. Assumes that there's a lot of boats registered to this marina. And it takes a minute or so before her eyebrows lift and she seems to find what she's looking for. Ah, yes, I see. Um, it seems that we do have a boat registered as the Creature Crossing in our marina. Um, do you happen to have license and ownership? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, well... I... Don't necessarily have license and registration, but what I do have papers, please. Is this? <laughs> <laughs> um. So the funny thing about that, normally that would work, but you need mm -hmm. to have something that you've already copied. So you have to actually. Oh have shoot! You're present. right. You have to have copied it ahead of time. You can't uh -oh. just magic it. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. We're just watching this happen. Yeah. <laughs> the harbor master I... stares at you some more, starting to get suspicious. I want to try to convince him that I'm here. The the check on the boat. Diplomacy uh, check for the yeah, exactly for the actual owner. Do I know? Would it just be registered to the suits, or do would it be registered? Under, like, a pseudonym? That's the thing. Um, you don't know. <laughs> You're not sure. If anyone wouldn't know either. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. I... Okay. Yeah. See, the thing is... I'm just here to make sure that the boat is in tip-top condition... I'm not trying to take it out. I'm just making sure that everything is in working order for the owner. And I try to like mumble out a name. Squints at you. Uh, -huh, uh I see. 
So, you're here to... inspect the vessel? Yeah, exactly. Um, for who again? I'm sorry, uh, lots of paperwork, you know. Uh, do you remember the name of the owner? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could. Okay, I won't say anything. <laughs> you can, if you like, mm. use uh, devise a stratagem here if you're uh, not sure of <laughs> how to get yourself out of this situation. I just might. I'm trying to think of. <laughs> What would work? I have an idea, but it would involve <laughs> me going back to the group and talking to them. <laughs> Which would sound like look suspicious. That would look really suspicious. Yeah. Uh yeah, okay. I'll I'll do Stratagem. Alright, so uh, roll me a d20 plus your intelligence mod. So, um, under your HUD, just, you know, make an attack roll uh, with devise a stratagem clicked. Uh... He's thinking. He's thinking. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't know if that works. Oh, um, ba basically just um, make an attack roll. So uh, when you have okay. it clicked on your HUD, so... Uh, strikes, under toggles, um, investigating a designated subject with pursue a lead. So you can click that, and then roll an, an attack roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, right now, you're at a bit of an impasse. The harbor master is starting to be a little wary of you since you're not able to provide uh, adequate information or documentation. However, you're not completely SOL. Uh, you do have a buddy that could potentially help you. And, uh, eh. Let me scroll back. <laughs> Pointing out. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pent is a little more charismatic than you, and if worse comes to worse, oh well, there's always this trump card. Okay. Uh. I guess I would, uh, yeah. I look back, try the try the give Pent a look. <laughs> give him the look. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Hold the phrase an eyebrow <laughs> as you look at him. <laughs> currently, tend cur currently tending to his <laughs> bruised and battered tails. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Ocho, you are now realizing that Pent is, in fact, very, very vain. Especially when it comes to his tails. Ow. Well, excuse me, as if you wouldn't be doing this too. <laughs> oh. Shh, shh. No, no I will not. I will not. I will not, shush. But yeah, uh, I'm Pent. Probably... <laughs> Depend. You see Ocho glance over in your direction, almost <laughs> pleadingly, like he wants you to help him. He'll uh, let go of his tails and will uh, walk up over. He'll walk. He'll walk over. Yeah. Uh. I was trying to make sure that the boat is everything in tip-top shape. 
Um, mm. But... Uh, we're having some difficulties here. <laughs> that so. What seems to be the matter? And the harbor master <laughs> will glance between. Well, she'll glance at Ocho first, and then at you. Well, doesn't seem to be kicking up a fuss just yet, but well, it's very professional. Well, adjusts her ledger. Ah, uh, yes. Um. Well. Uh, this gentleman here wants to inspect a particular vessel, but does not seem to have the proper paperwork, such as license and ownership registration. And unfortunately, I'm going to need to say that before I can let anybody onto any boat. Otherwise, you know, it could be chaos. And people going onto ships that it, they don't even own? That would look really bad. Uh, I could lose my job over that. It would indeed look quite bad. I have to agree. Is that? Hmm. Hmm. Come on, I know you can do it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Pent will, sl will slip a hand into one of his pockets and vape. But would you kindly let us see it? It will only be a couple minutes. Let's see. I'm activating like trump use... card. All right. Yep. Okay. Um, I believe there is a role associated with that. So, uh, I think it's under your spells yet, yeah, thank you. Yep. So this is... DC 15 will serve. So one moment. Eh. That bench is creaking under the weight of grace. <laughs> <laughs> He's chilling. Alright, one moment. Oopsie. Mm -hmm. Oopsie. Must hope it's not a crit success. Let's hope. <laughs> I can just click it and hit, never mind. Uh, that Oof. is. It makes that's it, a, unfortunately. That's a high roll. Yeah. However, if you have two hero points available, you can actually force me to re roll. I do actually have two hero points. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, that's a new use for him. Uh, but I, one I will wholeheartedly take. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, about hero points. They function like advantage or disadvantage, but uh, if you have one, you can uh, re-roll one of your rolls. However, if you have two, you can force an enemy to re-roll. So if you ever run into a situation where it's probably better to have an enemy re-roll, you can do that. <laughs> so I will go ahead and make that roll again. There's no quick to see. It'll be fine. So... <laughs> oh, okay. that is a crit success, I believe. Well, it'd be Queen. a crit failure on their end. Right? Yeah, well, crit failure for you, crit failure on their end. That was a good use of that uh, hero point. Alrighty, so, uh, according to Would You Kindly, Target's attitude becomes helpful towards you, and it can't use hostile actions. In addition, you may request or make a suggestion to the target, and they interpret this in the most favorable light possible, and immediately attempt to act on your request or suggestion. Alrighty. So, you asked her if you could have a look, yes? Yep. Um... Pent, as you make your request, and Ocho, you notice this, you know what trump card usage looks like. You see Pent reach into his coat pocket and um, fiddle around with the card that you know is probably sitting there. And the Harbor Master's mood seems to change 
almost instantly when Pent speaks. And she smiles and nods. Shit myself, is what I'm <laughs> hey, no, shut up! <laughs> um, Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> what the My hell? husband likes to interrupt with those sorts of things. I'm sorry! <laughs> Please ignore that. Was that was a drive by. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, what a mood killer. Okay. Uh, yeah, the harbor master's demeanor seems to shift noticeably and be a lot more helpful and pleasant. Ah, oh, yes, of course, uh, I can do that for you. Um, so, and she goes through the tablet again. Uh, creature crossing, creature crossing. Ah, yes, um, that would be the big white one over there at the end of the docks on the other side of the, uh, marina. Uh, oh, right, 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 you need the keys, don't you? Uh, one moment. Um, she flips Certainly open. Be helpful. She flips open the uh, the back of the ledger, which reveals what looks like a key rack, and removes a set of keys, and holds them out to you. Oh, ciao. Ah, here you go. Uh, Thank you. Keys should be all sorted. Um, maintenance fees have been paid for this month, so everything should be in order. Um, I can't be certain about the engine, though. I'm not sure if anyone's come by to take a look at it in a while, so you you might want to take a, a gander when you get a chance. That's what I'm here for! Alright, then. Uh, happy to be of service, so uh, enjoy your day, gentlemen. Have a good one. And Thank then she continues down. Thank you kindly. Continues down the dock. <laughs> she turns away. He's gonna stick his tongue out at her. <laughs> oh, no need to be like that. <laughs> so you didn't know. Is what I'm hearing. What? Uh, no, no. But I got the keys. We got the keys. It's fine. Okay. I guess that's what matters in the end. So the boat that you're looking for is. You scroll up this way, it is the biggest boat on the dock over here. Yeah, I figured. Mm. This one. Gotcha. Okay. Come on, let's go check it out. Also, Joe, I'm pretty sure since it was repossessed, I think yeah. your superior would have been the owner of it. Oh, shoot, you're right. Surprised you didn't eh. think of that. <laughs> Words can escape when stressful situations. Words can escape the mind when in stressful situations. Ooh. No harm. And now we have a new ally, should we need it. And for the future. And if we really need it, uh, that whole ledger thing had a bunch of keys, so uh, if this doesn't work think... out, we might just need to steal another one. Uh, that's an option. I mean, eh. Outside of this thing's engine being completely totaled, which I don't know why it would be, we probably shouldn't need to. We more than likely will need to steal another one. So this is your boat. Not yep. bad. That's as beautiful as the day I got her. So as you guys come up to the creature crossing, you do see the name plastered all along the side in the gaudiest most colorful lettering that you can kind of like 90s neon colors <laughs> so it's all across the side of the boat and also on the stern the back and your taste might be a little dated not very subtle <laughs> a... uh you know, I was going through a thing. I wanted a boat. It felt like the best uh, idea. Uh huh. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna get on the boat and go to inspect the internals. Okay. So. The rest of you, while Ocho descends into the bowels of the small yacht, I guess, uh, you guys, <laughs> what you notice is that 
it shows signs of significant wear. Um, like, it hasn't really been properly maintained in a while. It's a little bit dirty. It's got some barnacles growing in places. And the lettering on the side is a little bit faded and scratched up. So, well, the marina does take care of the boats. It does so in a very... Uh, minimalist. minimalist manner. It just makes sure it doesn't float away or get destroyed in the storm or anything like that. Like, actual uh, maintenance, like cleanup, engine repair, <laughs> and stuff like that. No, that's not, their, that's not their job. That's the job of the owner. And it looks like this hasn't really seen a lot of love or care in a long ass time. It's just been here for years. Not really, uh, not years. A couple months, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Leave it to the food suit. Leave it to the leave it to the higher ups to steal something and then never and then make sure and then not make sure it can still be used. Mm. <laughs> Alright. Uh Ocho, make me an engineering lore check. You got it. Ooh, good roll. Very good. Ooh, very good. That's a nineteen. Rolling yeah. hot today. <laughs> Alrighty. With that engineering lore. Um it's really dark and cramped uh, in the engine bay of the boat, uh, but because of your smaller size, you're able to squeeze yourself in there and maneuver around the mechanisms, and from what you can tell, yeah, uh, this boat has not been active in a while, uh, hasn't even been powered up at all to keep the engine running and in working order, so... Mm, could use some work before it's functional again. As it is, if you try to power it up, you're gonna completely blow out the engine and, well, that would require a very expensive and lengthy repair to, in order to replace it, which is time that you probably can't afford right now. Mm -hmm. But, in the state that it's in, you could probably get it back into working order. All we would really need is maybe an oil change uh, and some tinkering, just to make sure nothing's gotten in there in the couple of months since you've seen it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. right, after inspecting it, head on out. It's gonna need a little bit of work, but it's. She's still seaworthy. Looks over at the boat. Right. <laughs> yep. Look, it's gonna get us where we need to go. Just need to fix it up a little. I don't know if I'd roll up in an auction with that. <laughs> <laughs> can this boat? Can this boat even support all of our weights? That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> My That's idea scary. is only one way to find out, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could do, you know, math. <laughs> for real. I Apparently we, we get like a mini boat just for grave. That we can <laughs> like, a, like a little dinghy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or, or just maybe towed put, behind. Or maybe you put grave on the boat and somebody else gets towed behind. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure the boat can actually handle grave by himself as opposed to like a little mm. dinghy. <laughs> Aww. Uh, hmm. How would I determine how much this boat can hold? This would be Arcana, or in your case, Engineering. And Engineering lore like would a, be lower. Sounds like a math question. It sounds like yeah. a math question. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's enough. Um, that is a success. Alrighty. Um... So... For the size of this craft, you think it would be just barely enough to hold all of your weight. Like, 
Grave is really fucking heavy. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of size or space, it's weight. And um, being, well, the kind of person that you are and how much money you threw on this thing, you wanted something powerful, something uh, really able to uh, manage out on the sea. Something small, but really, really sturdy. So, yeah, it could probably support all of your weight, including graves, but, <laughs> ooh, you'd be cutting it real close. <laughs> so, God I'll, forbid I'll... we get in a boat chase or something. Oh, I'll... right. I'll... <laughs> How, much saying, weight... How much weight oh, is grave in bulk? How much great uh, weight is grave in bulk? Um, yes. Hang on, I have to actually check if there's actually weights recorded for automatons. One moment. Uh, and I also have the reinforced like chassis that I will probably add. Yeah. Definitely. My original plan with getting the information from the Harbor Master was to have Graves like put in hack the hack the little tablet and put in whatever name I said as the captain. So she would go and look and be like, Oh yeah, it's right there. That's the name. Yep. <laughs> I mean... Not a bad idea. All things considered. Yeah, but I would have had to yeah. have, like, clear that with Graves first, though, so they would know. There's a person you know. You're superior, but you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe they said Diamond Speed. I actually completely <laughs> forgot about that. It was like, yeah, I could have just said my superior's name. <laughs> oh. oh, well. Hang on. What is, hmm. what is like, the heaviest material in Strongest in the party. What's the maximum bulk that you can carry? Uh, maximum um, I can carry. Uh, currently is uh twelve. Twelve. Okay, because I was gonna say grave is at least twenty-five bulk, but I think that's still too light. I my max bulk is fourteen, if I'm reading that correctly. Again, this is I do have hefty hauler, so I think. Yeah, that yeah, it's fourteen for you. But... Um, yeah, grave would be very heavy. Uh, so yeah, definitely not twenty-five. So he's at least like maybe 50, 75 bulk. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, a so lot. we. It would okay, take so it, we have... it would take at least three of you guys, maybe four, to carry him. Okay, folks. So we do have reason to buy a, a tier. To spacious pouch. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Just uh, shove grave in it. Just... He doesn't need a breeze. Does he that fit in that? Is does that does it work like that? <laughs> actually, a good point. He does not need to breathe. Um. Oh my god! If I jump out of the pouch at somebody, that's literally like a weapon. Yeah. Wait. Oh my god. But <laughs> jump scare moment from the top row. You're on the top rope, yes. I'm surprised he didn't think this is what I was thinking of, folks. I, you, you know, yeah, <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't consider it. In her defense, DG, your thought processes are an enigma, just as much as mine and anyone else's hilarious is. <laughs> you know what, there if you, I guess, want to do that, 
Um, you know what? I'll allow it. I didn't consider that, but that's kind of funny and I like it. It solves the weight buy... problem! <laughs> we just need to buy a Type 2 and we're fine. True. There's also Can we even buy them at our level? I don't think so, but you know. No. Yeah. Not Type 2 anyways. But I was saying, if you if you just go with like he's twenty five, then I could fit him in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, so a shrink spell does exist, by the way. Yeah, a shrink would be good. Does that change Small. the bulk size? Oh. All it says is a creature becomes tiny. Yeah, but like. The density of the matter should still be the same, <laughs> question mark? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about I don't think... weight. <laughs> wait, oh wait, that's awful. <laughs> that means you can shrink Grave, hurl him at somebody, and just crush them to death with, with it. You could, Because yeah. his weight doesn't change. Oh my god, I'm Ant-Man. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Like, oh, I'm just trying oh, to find creative ways to solve the weight problem. Oh my god, that's dangerous. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Team, we've uh, discovered a new uh, plan of attack. <laughs> also, tiny graves at somebody and just crutches them. <laughs> okay, uh, anyways, uh, back to uh, the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so, if it, if it just needs some fixing up and some oil at least for the internals i think we could probably get that from the uh professor guy that we saw uh in our first session the one that we went to oh yeah he's professor got a lot of scrap Summers. could probably find stuff there yeah, yeah. would we be keeping it here would what we'd be keeping the boat here or we're taking it Oh, we'd be keeping the boat here until we need to use it, I assume. Okay. It's it's registered here. We know it's here. Um, and it's not going to look suspicious until we take it out, you know, and need to actually use it, so. But I can do fixing up with the boat, I think, with any downtime we have. I guess that is a downtime activity you could do. Yeah. When not scamming people. Yeah, when not scamming people. This thing is, yeah, we found our objective. Right. Is there anything on the boat? Or is it like fully empty? <clears throat> That's a good oh. question, Fo. Is there anything on the boat? Hmm. Under loot? Check. Unfortunately, no. It is empty. Aside from, you know, just, uh, like the furnishings that are on it. Aside from that, it's cleared out. There's not really anything there that you can make use of. There isn't even, um, uh, a toolkit or anything like that. Mm. So, unfortunately, if you want to do some repairs, you're gonna have to find, uh, yeah. a toolkit from somewhere. This boat is not sea ready, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I'll need to get a toolkit. I'll just uh, borrow one from Professor Summers. Do a lot of borrowing, you know? Yeah. That's what the suits are all about. We borrow everything we get. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm just how... borrowing these bodies for, you know, testing purposes. I'll return you, <laughs> I'll return them to you later as uh, undead subjects. 
Yeah. I I love the insistent terminology about borrowing stuff from this party. <laughs> no, we're not stealing money. We're just borrowing it. Yeah. Just borrowing it. We're just borrowing. Those people's credit card informations, we're just borrowing them, you know? <laughs> it sounds it sounds a lot less, you know, threatening. Yeah. <laughs> also no also no, don't worry, it's got less fast press. The uh End game sword from Extinction Curse on the boat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, what would you guys like to do right now? Uh, well, that's more or less my thing done. If we want to look for anybody that might be of importance. Yeah, I guess now we can do some information gathering. Mm -hmm. All right. Where would you like to do some yeah. information gathering? Well, first off, is there actually anyone around the harbor? Um, tourists, mostly. Um, a lot of the boat. What time is it right now? 1700 is... Five. Like five. Yeah, that's five o'clock in the afternoon. So a lot of the boats are just coming back in from their uh, day tours, the island tours. Um, you know, a lot of people like be that. coming and going. So a lot of people have been coming and going. Uh, at the end of the dock where you guys are, uh, there's only like one small boat that comes in up here, uh, and it's being piloted by a lone woman who hops off and ties off the the boat to the dock. There's someone you could talk to. She looks like an adventurer. She's certainly dressed as one. <clears throat> I was gonna go talk to her. Hmm, let me see here. I'd say she's been working. I'd say Pence, since he kind of masquerades as an errant, I think. All right, yeah. I'm just checking something real quick. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm just checking your uh, proficiencies and stuff, all of you. Do, do, do. <laughs> hmm. Dun, 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 dun. So for a couple of you, she does seem oddly familiar for some reason. I'm not sure why. Oddly familiar, huh? Yeah. So if you have a higher than um, like 15 for like society or arcana. So, so, like, they would be 10 plus whatever your mod is. So if you have higher than um, plus 5 in either, you would kind of feel like you recognize her. Only have a plus 5. Yeah. So yeah, it's plus 5 or higher in okay. Arcana or Society. And uh, if you do, you may roll for it. She does look kind of familiar. I don't know why. I guess I'll roll society then. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Finny uh, can, I think... Uh, Ocho can. Guidance. Yeah, Ocho It's free! What, uh, what, what, what am I rolling? Um, society. 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 And if either of you had like academia lore, but I think I'm has that. <laughs> hmm. I'm get off your computer. <laughs> hmm. You are not sure. 
sure of who this person is. She's very familiar for some reason. Best you can tell it's for probably something academic, you're not sure. She looks like halfway between an errant and a scholar, but lots of those types around here. Hmm. She does look familiar, so. Hmm. I. Hmm. It's like the hat, the whip, the brown <laughs> coat. <laughs> Just can't place my finger on it. Yeah, it's a very iconic look. All she needs instead of that torch is like, some kind of like shiny skull and then we're golden. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ugh. Yeah, she doesn't seem to be up to much. She seems to be unpacking her gear from the boat uh, after tying it off. She seems to have a lot of gear. But she also seems to be the only one manning that boat. Having a bit of a difficult time. <laughs> I call none of us are going to help her. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just staring, you know. Yeah, we're just chill hanging out on the pier, bro. I guess Finny will walk up this time. Are we staring at that person? <laughs> um, excuse me. The woman stops uh, unloading her gear and lets it drop back into the hull of the boat. Huh? Oh! Hi there! Uh, sorry, I, I didn't see you over there. I'm kind of preoccupied over here glances at the piles of bags still sitting on the floor of the boat. Are you uh, taking I'm sorry, can care I, can of I all help that... you with something? Are you doing all that by yourself? <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, with this? Yeah, I'm used to it, you know. Uh, been a while since I've been out this way, uh, so not used to the heat, you know. Yeah. Usually I'm stuck in a classroom or an office, so a nice little break, but mm. I've been slacking on the working out. That's me. I'm kind of the same way. I'm always stuck indoors. Okay. Just really, I'm really not used to the heat here. Stares at you, steps a little bit closer, leans forward and squints. And looks you up and down. Oh, you definitely look like the bookish type. Uh, what is it you do? Uh, you uh, teach at a university or something? I do research. Oh, what kind? Into relics. see her eyes sparkle with enthusiasm for a moment. Then, uh, her face just positively lights up. Oh, really? Seems that we're in the same field of study then. Uh, I happen to be a pretty well-versed scholar in artifacts and relics myself. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I was teaching up at a university in Sheridan up until... A couple of years ago, um, but I'm on a rather lengthy sabbatical for the past six years now, something like that. Yeah, oh, academic life wasn't really my thing, so here I am. Smiles sheepishly, gestures to the boat. Oh, you, 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 you kind of sound familiar. You may may, I, may I inquire about your name? Uh, 
She smiles broadly and holds her hand out to you. Oh, uh, Montana Smith. Uh, I guess, uh, no, not a doctor, unfortunately. No, they rejected my thesis, unfortunately, so just Montana Smith. Uh, Finny will reach out and take the hand and just say, Finny, you can call me Finny. So, uh, Finny, uh, at the mention of her name, you know exactly who she is, and it's hard not to. So, mm -hmm. Montana Smith is, <laughs> um, I guess you could call her a prominent scholar and a cultural anthropologist um, who studies folklore and uh, in the relation to relics uh, and artifacts. Okay. And a couple Ow. of years ago, uh, she was... Uh, she was a PhD student at uh, University of Sheridan, uh, so yeah, uh, a little bit further northwest of where you guys are right now. And she published a paper in regards to the power of folklore and belief and relics, uh, that if people believed hard enough in something, it could imbue an object with power. And unfortunately, she got laughed out of academia and uh, essentially destroyed her reputation. And this was a couple of years ago. What and the since heck? then, she's become a bit more of a, an adventurer type scholar, uh, exploring the more remote regions of the world and uh, collecting information and researching folklore and relics. But, as rumor has it, she was also a bit of a relic hunter. Yeah, you definitely know her because uh, mm -hmm. her academic work has definitely crossed your desk at some point. Oh, that Montana Smith. I actually read your paper. Do you, do you say that to her face? You read her paper? Yeah. Yeah. That seems to actually make her really, really happy. And her face lights up even more. Oh, you did? Uh, what do you think of it? Groundbreaking, no? It was actually really insightful. I like to look into the more obscure stuff, you know what I mean? Oh, definitely. It's such an interesting subject, you know? How belief and folklore shapes essentially our entire existence like can you really believe it like you believe in something hard enough and it practically becomes real it shapes a little more than that i think well i'm glad you think so all the other people in the university circuit didn't seem to think so after I submitted my paper, it pretty much ruined any shot of getting tenure at my university. Actually, they fired me afterwards. Eh, their loss. Really? That seems like it should probably be illegal, no? I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. I appealed and everything, but... I don't know. I decided to just shrug it off and not worry about it. I'm pretty sure yeah, well, someone like said, out there didn't lost. like my work. And uh, yeah, Finny, to add in what you do know, her her work was intentionally shot down and sabotaged because you know that this sort of information is a little on the dangerous side. So perfect for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, she's not a Tomb Raider. She's essentially just a gender-bent Indiana <laughs> Jones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Mo Montana <laughs> Smith. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Name of a state, common last name. There you go. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Funnily enough, I actually work in a similar field of research. Look at that. Yeah. 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 Y
he stares at you. Oh. <laughs> oh? <laughs> and, really? What, and what, we'll kind of, give it, what kind of research? And we'll give a death glare to Bloopy. <laughs> Bloopy stares at Pen. Bloop. 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 More of the research into deity related artifacts. Squint. Uh, this seems to catch Montana's attention. Her eyes go uh, wide. Oh, really? Well, that's not exactly a common field of study outside of the divine orders. And you know how religious folk are. Kind of secretive, like to keep things hush hush. Uh, uh, you know, keep it to themselves. It's so, been like that uh, forever. So, uh, find anything good? Many things. Uh huh. Nods her head, stares at you expectantly. Go on, come on. Like, you can't just say that and not tell anything. Come on, spill. <laughs> Well, for example, let's just say Squints. the relation of artifacts and gods, Squints. they can shape how they will, I guess. Bloop. Bloop. And in fact, I do have a full belief that what everyone does Bloop. can in fact create gods. In the middle of that sentence, da, uh, D, son of a bitch, you have too many characters, DG, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> Finny, in the middle of that sentence, Bloopy will lunge at your face and latch on. Oh, not there again. are many books like, ah, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> that's about to warn him too. Uh, apologies, the, the wisp doesn't like it when he talks too much about these sorts of topics, and Pen will resume trying to uh, assist <laughs> getting Bloopy off of off of City's face. Oh, for the love of Montana, will just stare blankly. Uh, should I be worried? Is he drowning? He, he, he's actually what? drowning. He's actually the wisp is car. Though to be completely brutal. Really honest, yes, the wisp is attempting to drown him, but it should he should be fine once we get it off of him. Yeah, lady, you didn't have to worry. If he dies, it's no sweat off of our backs either. <laughs> Stairs. Can I athletics Ooh. check to hey. get Boopy off of his face? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, DC is uh, animatronic. Nope. <laughs> so, oh god. Alright. Can I try again? <laughs> My turn. Yeah, everyone doesn't want to join in. Do I not have... Or, wait, can I aid Pent? Oh yeah, you can it? aid. Yeah. Wait, I agree penalty? I need I, to check things. I will do another... Yep. Uh, check. Nope. <laughs> hey, Handler, do you need a bit of help there? <laughs> Just a little. I'll try. I'll give it a shot. Oh, there you go. Once again, Oath Choice doesn't want to do it. <laughs> All right. I don't have athletics prop right now. This uh, this time, the wish is currently C for me. Yeah, Ocho. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ocho, oh, just like before, you climb up uh, onto Finny and manage to grasp onto Bloopy's tendrils, and they feel different this time. They're kind of foamy, oh, no. and you feel the sting of salt uh, against your hands, and you manage to pry Bloopy off. Why is it always so weird? Ugh! It's salty! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bloopy rotates in your hands and stares up at you and squints. Don't give me that look. Bloop. Bloop. Just toss Bloop. it back into the air. Bloop. Bloop. You're really good at that. I don't like that I'm good at it. Are you sure you don't have any prior experience in prying things off of people's faces? <laughs> no! Wait, what's that supposed to mean? 
I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh sorry, excuse me, we can we could talk about that another time. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, are you That's sure fine. that little water wisp thing doesn't seem to like you talking about stuff? You sure it's fine? You know how this research is. People don't like it. I can't be talking about it in the either. Your university didn't like it, doesn't like it, and the wisp doesn't like it. Comparisons! And, and you just keep that thing around? It does wonders for my sanity. Stairs. <laughs> um, oh, I mean, it's, it's okay. always okay. Uh, it's always nice sure. to have a friend, a friend around. No, look, it'll be fine. Do 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 friends regularly try to drown you on a regular basis? I wouldn't call that friends. It's more of my pet. His name is Bloopy. Okay. Um, but hi, Bloopy. Bloop. Bloop. Other than the attempted drowning, it's generally rather friendly. But anyways, okay. Uh, so, there's something I want to ask you. Oh yeah? Sure. Shoot. S since you're here in Tortuga and you're a relic researcher, you wouldn't happen to know the recent discovery that happened here, right? She folds her arms over her chest and rests a hand uh, against her chin. She considers your question. Uh, I mean, it's Tortuga, right? Like, there's lots of relics and artifacts being discovered around here all the time. I mean... The errands around here are probably the most decked out I've ever seen. I'm not talking about any old relic. I'm talking about a really big one. There's been rumors about it everywhere. No, she maybe not everywhere, but she there's certainly been a couple you. of them. She stares at you rather intently. Really? I've not heard anything about it. I'm surprised. I thought that's why you'd be here. Well, I'm here for other research. Um, not for anything specific. I'm always collecting local folklore and such. Um, but well, I've not heard of anything significant for a while. Okay. Well, me and my uh, team here. We're on the hunt for a specific relic. Uh huh. We don't know the, the name specific? or what it is, <laughs> but it's supposedly it's supposedly it's been found <laughs> a really really powerful relic. She thinks for a moment and tilts her head to one side and tilts it back and forth. It might yeah. be related to someone like Galileo, or maybe like the other yeah. three around here. Hmm. I'm not sure. The, informa the information out there on it is uh, beyond sparse as of current. So we're around trying to obtain information on it. Hey, actually, any information that you might have would probably prove very useful. Search notes for a second. One second. She wanders back to oh, means. Take your time. the boat. Um, starts going through her belongings. And it looks like a lot of survey equipment, mountaineering gear, jungle exploration stuff, you know. Uh, typical equipment that you need to go exploring in the jungle or perhaps even diving. Uh, and eventually she pulls out. A very weather-worn journal. Well, if it comes back, uh, walks back up to the rest of your group. Uh, okay, okay. Flips through a notebook. Uh, hmm. 
could it be the Titan Pearl? No, no, no. That's definitely in the hands of the Order right now. Um, what else could it be? Starts flipping through her notes somewhere. Oop. Oh shit, there goes my monitor. <laughs> oh. oh no. And my oh, monitor. Oh. My oh. Threw those notes off. a little too hard. <laughs> oh. My, my uh, laptop, or not my laptop, my whole setup just shifted because <laughs> I leaned over oh. too much. Whoa, whoa, wait. Uh, a little too into the research notes here. <laughs> a little too into the research notes. Um, starts, she fumbles uh, and falls over. <laughs> fumbles and falls over. She starts flipping through her notebook. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Oh, let me. Eh. <laughs> Sorry, my desk is like really, really cramped. <laughs> Let me see what she's able to come up with for you. Eh. Okay. So after a few moments of searching, she does stop on a page. Um. Well, I can definitely tell you it's not Zephyrian in origin. Uh, those tend to be found around Sheridan. Uh, and, hmm, it's not, it's probably not Celestean. The Aquarians in the Triton Sea tend to be pretty thorough about finding artifacts related to her. Very important, you see. Uh, can't be, couldn't it? Huh. I thought that thing was supposed to have been lost thousands of years ago. What is it? Oh, well... I have been researching the folklore around this area for a while, and... Although Galileo is part of the Triad, he's not really worshipped nearly as much as, say, um, Origin, the creator, for obvious reasons. But, hmm. His name does pop up in some of the stories around the islands. Around here and further north of here. Um, well, rumor, folklore has it that thousands of years ago during the God War, a very powerful relic of the god Galileo was used for what? I have no idea. But,. It was used by mortals during the God War and had some some kind of catastrophic effect. But all of the records are really, really vague on it. So I couldn't tell you what exactly it does, but uh, from what I've been able to determine, the relic is called um uh, what's the word? Best translation I can come up with is, uh, the Book of Horizons? Okay, the Book of Horizons. Can I do a recall knowledge check on that? Oh, uh, you may. That would be a religion check. Or, um, <clears throat> your redacted lore, if you'd like. I think that kind of falls in with that. Well, I have lore artifacts and that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you can use any of those. I guess for now he'll dive into lore artifacts. Okay. That's a 10. <laughs> um. Hmm. The Book of Horizons <sighs> sounds like it rings a bell, you're not sure. You honestly couldn't really figure out anything about it offhand. It's not super familiar to you, aside from being a relic of the god Galileo. All you oh, really know is that <laughs> uh, it was probably something passed down from the god to humanity. But beyond that, I don't know. Mystery to you. 
A relic of Galileo origin. That might actually fit the bill really well of what we're looking for. If it's as powerful as the stories say. Montana will nod her head at you. Well, I mean, it's a an artifact of one of the big three, of course. How, how could it not be? Like, that's the jackpot of all jackpots. Don't you get it? I mean, like, any kind of god relic is important and significant, but one of the big three? There's not a lot of those in the stories, so finding something like that, well... I'm sure everyone would be dying to get their hands on it. Figure Definitely. out what it does. There's not a lot of information regarding the time period of the God Wars. I mean, records are pretty good beforehand and after, but during? Pretty vague. That does sound strange, but yeah. I believe. And I'll do some more research on this on my end. Just now that I have a name, I think I can get something up. I have a really extensive library back at my place. Oh. Well, I'd love to see it if I ever found the chance. Always looking for some good information to add to my own research. I can probably bring you back a few books. Wouldn't hurt. Hey, if you can spare it and I'm around, I'll... Well, I... You know, I hang around the bars and the, the errands quarter a lot, so I'm sure you'll bump into me again sometime. And trade or more could... stories and information then. Or we, you know, we could exchange contact information. Would that make it easier? She smirks at you. Oh, is this your way of trying to get my number? How bold? No. This is purely for worse. <laughs> I, I love you. No said no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not like that. Okay. It's not like. <laughs> uh huh. I see. Okay. Just some academic exchange between colleagues, right? Yes. Okay, whatever you say. Uh, sure. Um, she'll rip out a piece of paper from the back of her journal and hastily scribble something on, hands it to you. Well, this is where you can contact me at, but uh, I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer in a timely manner, depending on where I am. Uh, sometimes I don't really get good reception out here. Mm hmm. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. Yeah, sure. It was nice meeting you too. And uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, how rude of me. I didn't introduce myself. Steps forward, extends a hand to all of you. Uh, Montana Smith. Uh, Pent will reach a hand back. Uh, Pent. <laughs> oh, so. Chick's hand. This unit's designation is Grave. Stare over at Grave and <laughs> uh, a bit of a wave and a salute. Hi there, big guy. Hi, big lady. <laughs> Stares down at herself. Hey, wait, I know I've been <laughs> slacking on the workouts. I'm not that big, am I? He, he doesn't mean it that way. Oh, so he, he's the literal sort, I guess, right? He's still an orc mode, I'm right? A... <laughs> orc disguise? I believe, I believe so. Okay. <laughs> He's, um... A uh, new automaton that we're uh, testing out. Oh, this unit apologizes. Is big lady inappropriate? Perhaps small lady, or little lady, or minuscule lady may be more <laughs> appropriate. 
There is still, so, there are still some, there are still some kinks tired out. You know what? Don't, I like don't little like lady. Little lady's good. Alrighty then. And uh, stares at Hexa. And you are. <laughs> are you there, Vengeance? Vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> Being talked to. Horrifying to know. <laughs> yes, horrifying. A woman is. Yeah, lock in, lock in. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> She's she's just busy playing games on her phones, huh? What's up, huh? You're being talked to. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, I I didn't Burn catch it. your name. Uh, Hexa. Oh, well, pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, definitely an interesting, varied bunch. Oh, uh, you're not local errands, are you? I haven't seen you around here the last couple of times I've been in. No, we're... No, we're in from out of country. Eh, like me then. <laughs> uh, I couldn't have I come picked from a better place. Myself. Oh, well, you couldn't have picked a better place to spend time. <sighs> oh, the islands out here are really quite nice. A little dangerous sometimes, but quite nice. Eh, no more dangerous than the rest of the world. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Um, so, I don't know if you've been out on the water at all, but if you do, uh, try to be careful. Some of the uh, sea creatures have been a little bit rowdy as of late. I had to cancel a whole hmm. day of diving expeditions because of it, so, you know. Hmm. Looks like we'll the have boat. to keep that in mind. Good to know for these other individuals. Luckily for this unit, it doesn't swim. <laughs> are you help Penn will just turn around and look at Grave. Are you even are you even waterproof? Oh yeah. Hmm. Held this slightly scrunched good way. Not entirely believing that. <laughs> but not going to press the issue. Looks Would you like to try? Looks at Grave. Would you like to try? No, I'll I'll take your word for it for now. Well alright then. Uh anyway. Right, um, yeah, so if you do end up going out on the water, if at all possible, don't get off the boat. Understand me? Do not get off the boat. If you end up in the water, it's going to end up very, very badly for somebody. Most likely you. I understand. Keep that in mind. Noted. Directed Simple. noted. Wouldn't Simple want to. Water isn't exactly my forte. Alright. Yeah, it dries out anyway. my skin. Makes me all poke. Difficult is to throw out tails. Very difficult, let me tell you. Yes, this unit observed it during the last 30 minutes of the commute. Well, <laughs> that was because sitting is a nuisance sometimes. Anyway, um, if you'll all excuse me, it's getting a little late. Uh, I'm just gonna go retrieve oh, some of my it's... equipment and uh, call it a day, I guess, and hang out at the bar. Uh, got a lot of uh, information to sift through for today. <laughs> well, by all means, go right ahead. All right, uh, I guess well, I will get see out of you here. around. Waves. Hopefully. It was very nice cool. to meet you. Thank you for your contact information. We'll be sure to use it. <laughs> she waves you guys. Hilarious. And gets back to you sorting through her equipment. You have obtained the inform contact info for Montana Smith. Da, 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 da. <laughs> this is a worthwhile trip. 
You know, this unit isn't programmed to like or dislike individuals, but if this unit was, that individual would be in positive standing with this unit. They were very useful to our mission. They were. Are you, are you afraid we can't, like, get you to have a like dislike? Well, you can get this unit to do anything, really. But certain subroutines are locked. Well, I guess it's more like magic. I guess by more about my advantages, we could unlock that subroutine at some point. This unit isn't confident that that's possible. But biologicals do love to dream, so you can dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh yeah, god. So we're good at it. Okay, so, so you're saying you don't dream of electric sheep? I don't even think he sleeps. Why would those animals be electric? <laughs> uh, have you ever heard? Well, I mean, there's there's a there's a couple of lightning sheep in one of those famous game series. Uh, name escapes me. Pocket monsters. Oh yeah. What from the second game or something? Yeah, uh, fan favorite. See, there's a there's electric sheep. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> moving on. I got some information I can look into. Close. There's a f I have a gut feeling that if the book crashes, it's really that important. It's likely what we're looking for. The horizon. Okay. An artifact of Galileo, huh? So I was AFK for a little bit. Was there anything that was like what this book can do, or is it just that it's like pretty important? It's pretty important, and it's supposedly an artifact from the God Wars that was lost a thousand years ago. Two thousand. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like the the TLDR is that uh, the Book of Horizons is an artifact of one of the big three, which are the creator gods of Mistgard and the universe. And Galileo is the god of space. Um, Fun! And, uh, yeah, and that artifact was supposedly used at some point during the God Wars, but um, historical records around that time period, for some reason, are really, really vague and kind of sketchy. Everything before and after, why. well documented. God Wars, not so much. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah. Uh, but it's in according to folk uh, folklore, it's one of the artifacts from the triad bestowed to humanity. But it was lost about two thousand years ago. No one knows where it is or what it does. So if anyone can. Help me getting info on this relic. That'd be very much appreciated. However, Pent. Mm -hmm. What's up, Penny? I think since you've been out more, uh, do you happen to know if there's any uh, religious organizations in town? Oh, uh. That's probably one or two. Hmm. If I had to make an educated guess, because I haven't been, I haven't tried to integrate myself that closely with that, with those parts of parts of civilization here, there'd probably be probably a sect. There'd probably be at least a church or two in the errant section and the tourist section. Yeah, probably. Potentially. Even the even the residential areas. Yeah. There's probably at least eight or two in each of the major districts. <clears throat> Legend is always a bit is always a big part. People time. <laughs> any a church, a church of any particular sect you're looking for, or I really want to know if there's any uh, if there's any uh, I guess. Anyone following Galileo here? Because if this artifact two. really is what I think it is, then they would not ignore this. 
Hmm. And would likely be after it, same as us. That would probably be. I could probably. I could probably guess that I've met one or two Galileo followers in my exploits around town. You could make a religion roll if you'd like. Sure, I will do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I am frame. Oh. Okay. What do you do? I was gonna say I'll cast guidance on you, but okay. <laughs> I mean, guidance would increase that by one, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. yeah. So that makes it a twenty-three. I'll just assume that you cast it. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about it. So okay. with a twenty-three, that's a good roll, actually. Uh. Not quite. Yeah, not a quick success. Um. So what I can tell you with that roll is. So. Around the Tortuga Isles, particularly, uh, most islanders worship uh, the goddess of the sea, Salisea, and the goddess of the winds, Zephyria. Um, but the god Galileo does have a pretty significant following, not just in the islands, but around the world. Uh, and his order is usually known as uh, the Order of the Trailblazers, because a god of uh, space and exploration. Um, hmm, what can I tell you about the order? One second, eh, my husband needs something. Look. The GM is gone. We're alone. We are legally oh. allowed to gain at least 50 experience. But we don't do experience. <laughs> oh, you're. Oh, that's right. That's right. We don't do experience here. I'm so. I'm so used to AV. I place grave down in the corner. Plus fifty billion GP. <laughs> Yo. I Yo. place grave in the water. <laughs> grave robs the money of all the sea creatures. What the? F and that's how he. And that's how he learned Atlantis existed that day. <laughs> I'm though curious, what kind of monsters are in the sea? The monsters? The. <laughs> well, you just asked how kind of monsters were in the sea. I know. Sorry I didn't know in that. TF2 there's some mean monsters. Yeah, that's I'm sorry about that. My husband was just telling me about this um, Chinese bakery that he found, and he bought a lot of uh, buns, like barbecue park buns and stuff. <laughs> mm, <laughs> buns? They look pretty cheap. He loves snacking on those, so... Nice that we found a place that's cheap. Anyway, I'm sorry. What was I saying earlier? Uh, Galileo. Um, right. Galileo, Order of the Trailblazers, what you can tell me, yeah. tell me about the so, Order. So, the Order of Trailblazers is... Uh, worship of Galileo is fairly decentralized. It's not really so much a religion as it is a way of life. Um, they're more in line with, say, Le um... Uh, explorers, guilds, um, and such like, uh, things like that, uh, and historical societies. So they're kind of like, you know, uh, explorers, guilds, and churches at the same time. It's not really, hmm, it's hard to explain. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to separate the two. Uh, but there, there's not really... There aren't really practices for worship um, beyond, you know, trying to explore the unknown, going on adventures, etc. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there, there's not really any churches to Galileo. There are shrines, uh, but you wouldn't have a difficult time finding followers of Galileo, especially in the Tortuga Isles. Like, it, it's pretty much islands of adventure. You're, you know, you're gonna stumble them everywhere, uh, stumble across them everywhere like rocks. Mm -hmm. um, but as for the Order of Trailblazers themselves, there's probably actually a guild hall somewhere in Las Palmeras. I mean, the biggest city in Tortuga, you know, highly likely. Oh, 
all I'm saying is that it'd be safe to consider them as our, I guess, competition for this artifact. One of them. Many one of them. One of many factions that are likely trying to get a hold of this thing. I'm sh it wouldn't be very difficult to run into Fathers of Galileo here. This place. The Tortorgan Islands, basically. Basically, Scream of Adventure. So if you do find any, get as much info as out of them as you can. Certainly. No doubt that wouldn't be hard to find tried to, to the guy as well. Yeah. Learn that. Uh, I guess we have to figure out what we want to do now. Yeah, it is 1800, mm. so like 6 p.m. Yeah, it's about when session should end. Yeah. Here take like 10 or 10, 10 or so 10 minutes. Or, yeah, 10 or so minutes. Kind of, kind of starting my end. So, anything else that you guys would like to do for the day? Like, it's evening, but the Tortuga Isles are kind of located around like what would be the equator. So the sun is setting at this point. It's not nighttime yet. Yeah. But nighttime is when the town really comes alive. Las Palmeras has a pretty bustling nightlife. Almost like there's a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'm not. It's not because I want to go to the club, but I'm saying that maybe we should go to the club. <laughs> There's a nightclub. Uh, the bars are usually going to be packed at this time. And probably be a good place to, you know, scout for information. Yeah. Especially with the errands. Errands would be coming back around this time because you really don't want to be on the water at night because it is fucking scary. You ever mm -hmm. been on the water at night? It's pitch black. There's nothing it there. Is, yeah. It is terrifying. There's nothing but moonlight. There's nothing but moonlight, so you better hope it's not a cloudy night. Yeah, yep. it is scary. <laughs> Even when you're standing on the beach, it is freaking scary. So, yeah. so which one you want to do, bar or nightclub? <laughs> uh, I think the vending machine has a pretty good point. <laughs> the nightclub. Getting putting grave in a nightclub would be an undoubted great bo great boost to our initial economy. Mm -hmm. Funds. <laughs> I guess the party wants to go to a nightclub, though. That's the party best. wants to go to yeah. the nightclub? <laughs> well, hmm. Alrighty. Good thing you put that map in, I guess. Good. Yeah, that was actually the map I put in this morning. <laughs> wow, convenient. Uh, I know. Yeah, convenient. Hang on one moment, let me find it. We have made uh, combat for another session. We have made <laughs> combat longer. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't I've been <laughs> unless we get to fight at the club. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, that did, you, that did you'd be surprised. In that did happen in Regenesis. They got into a fight at the nightclub, but it's not what you think. <laughs> oh, trust you, the restroom. Oh. Is yeah. Ocho used in the bathroom? <laughs> You want to know what's hilarious? He's taking put, a shower. Hold on, hold on. I put restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I put restrooms oh, yeah, the, in like a lot shower. of my maps. There you go. <laughs> I do too. They're yeah. funny. Look, <laughs> Sino has restrooms in it. <laughs> yeah, DG and I are kind of hilarious because since we started <laughs> making modern maps. Um, we put restrooms in all of our maps. <laughs> Not because, like, you know, they're gonna actually be used, it's just, like, a weird... Um, it's for fun. Yeah, it's just for fun, in the off chance that someone does decide to use them, or, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Grave goes in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> so let me put you guys out here. Oops, wrong person. Uh. The funny thing about this map I'm about to stick you guys on, I actually used it before <laughs> in Regenesis because I needed a nightclub. Ooh, um, reusing assets, we love it. Reusing assets. So the only person this will be familiar to is DJ. Oh, where's my music? Time to reuse some music. You got the jams, Phil. Yeah, which one do I want to reuse? I think they're all pretty good. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so. There we go. 
Oh yeah, Crypt of the Necrodancer. <laughs> Literally the entire reason um, <laughs> Regenesis had a Metal Mancy arc is because I was addicted to Crypt of the Necrodancer for like a couple of months. Hell yeah. I still haven't beaten Arya's uh, chapter because fuck that shit. I can't... I. I don't think you're ever gonna be able to do that though. My rhythm personally. is not that good. Anyway, um I don't have any tokens on this map because I wasn't expecting you to pick the nightclub, but uh it's Hey, we might go to the bar. Just yeah, we might go to the bar. Um So you guys head to Club Calypso, which at this time of the day it's not quite busy yet, it's starting to. Uh, people are just getting off of work, errands are coming back from contracts, uh, the nightlife is just started, uh, getting started. And as you roll up to the club, there's not really a line, you guys can just walk right in, don't really do the coat check or anything, not really anything to bring. Um, and there's quite a few people there already, dancing, there's a DJ up on stage, pumping out tunes. I think this is the actual entrance. <laughs> <laughs> this is a coat check, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we went like the opposite way. <laughs> we <It's> did. Fine. <laughs> mm. um, we're just we're just that badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The music's blasting. What do you guys like to do? Uh, I will leave this up to you, team. I am not sure. Grave is going to walk straight through the dance floor and post up against this wall. <laughs> and then just go into vending machine mode. Income. <laughs> oh, Grave's got a plan already. Perfect. You go into concealment mode, vending machine. Hey there, handlers. I think I'm going to stay here for a bit. See what I can drum up. Drum up. Graves, you're a genius. Good luck. Um, uh, Grave, almost immediately, as soon as the rest of the party leaves you, you're, you're already approached by people who are uh, already a couple of drinks in and start trying to shove money into into your, yeah. Cart Feeling deck. thirsty? Need a refresh? Oh. <laughs> uh, People in front of you get startled. Holy fucking shit, it talks! This shit, this thing is awesome! You have a bit of a crowd forming around you now, trying to interact with you. All the rest of the They're parties. too drunk to care! Yeah, they're too drunk! <laughs> oh, so what we have here is a shit ton of lightweights! Yeah! <laughs> I mean, it's only like 6pm and they're... You know, already in the hole. Such is the way of modern life. Anyway, what are you guys doing? I think the rest of us are once again gathering information. All right. Oh. Chilling at the bar. Maybe getting drinks. Oh no, shoot. A we'll, we'll, just put it on the we'll just put it on the company's tab. Company tab, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Where's this is most money? definitely a business expense. Where's my bartender in PC? Okay, this is a different bartender than the one that's in the casino. Just imagine they're different. I, I don't have my other bartender. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, nah, I have to nah, make it's those a, uh, it's, a it's a Catherine situation. It's a Catherine slash Officer Jenny slash Nurse George situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, bartender Fair comes up to friend. you guys. Ah, what can I get for you? What you got? Ah, well, you've got some top shelf whiskey, of course. Or I can mix you up a cocktail if you'd like. I'll take the cocktail. Any requests or dealer's choice? Surprise me. Not very well, then. Uh, bartender turns around and 
starts grabbing a couple of bottles off the shelf and starts mixing them together. It's very flashy, actually. Seems to be a flare bartender. Spinning bottles around, tossing them into the air like he's juggling them. Puts together the drink in the shaker and shakes it. Pours out a purplish looking drink into a martini glass and slides it your way. There you are, madam. Enjoy. Thanks. And what about you, sir? What kind of drink may I get you? Well, whiskey will be fine. Stares at you. <laughs> Fireball or regular whiskey? Fireball. Fireball. Ah, <laughs> ah excellent choice. <laughs> Bartender cast fireball. Ball. <laughs> 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 You can only drink it once. <laughs> yep. That's it'll be funny. the it'll be the it'll be the last thing you ever taste. <laughs> fireball whiskey cast fireball. <laughs> I should I should do that at some point. That'll be really funny. <laughs> That's funny. That is a pretty fun idea. <laughs> That's really funny. Bartender grabs a glass of spiced whiskey from the wall, pours it into a rocks glass for you slides it across the bar. Ah, oh, there you go, sir. One fireball whiskey. He will take it, and he will start drinking it. Enjoy your drink, sir. Continues Thank you kindly. Drink service. Oh, gloopy. <laughs> <laughs> what you drinking, Gloopy? So, uh, Hexa, the drink that you seem to have appears to be some kind of lavender martini. Oh. A little, it's a little, it's a little sweet and flowery. Uh, definitely not something that you'd find commonly around here. Yeah, Hexa fucks with us. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do something. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so there's like, so Grave is pretty popular right now, right? There's a bunch of people getting drinks. Oh yeah. Hey there, patrons. Would you like the opportunity be to be entered in to win free Grave energy drinks for life? Simply follow these instructions. The Grave Corporation is always looking for new markets to expand our enterprise into and to deliver the clean, fresh, refreshing taste of Grave to the world. If you have information about popular destinations in the city, such as auctions or markets or meetings of artifact trading, there are Grave Corporation representatives in this club right now. Simply approach the bar and ask them if they crave the Grave. And any information that you have will be rewarded with an automatic entry into a sweepstakes to win free Grave Energy drinks for life. Oh, that sounds very convincing, guys. <laughs> that is brilliant. Excellent. All right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I will actually make a roll. One moment. We're gonna get some drunk info. Hell There's no. two drunk, it doesn't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> they're both drunk and addicted to the grave energy drink. Let's go. I they're on, they're on an upper already. and a downer at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, Grave, um, most of the people around you right now are uh, both drunk and hyper at the same time. It's weird. Uh, uh, the reactions you get are like, oh man, this is so awesome. It's like, where, where, where can I find out more? And just like people just like smacking hands all over uh, your screen, like a keypad, uh, or trying to fiddle around with 
you know, <laughs> with the stuff, uh, or trying to shake you down to get, uh, more energy drinks. They seem kind of confused. You're not sure if anyone's really heard you. At, at least that's not sober right now. I didn't think this through. <laughs> well, if Grave gets into a fight, we have to start combat, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I that's how combat drunk people. Well, hey, that's how <laughs> Extinction Curse starts. <laughs> Don't you please step away right? from the machine after you've completed your purchase? <laughs> that did happen in Extinction Curse. I remember. Uh, Grave, oh, one of the more bolder and bigger patrons, really well built dude, steps up and stares at you challengingly. Oh yeah, or else what? What can you do? Vending machine shakes you a little bit. Oh no. Oh uh -oh. god. Unfortunately, this unit's obligated to remind you that it wouldn't do that if it were you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> hmm. oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, the way that you say that, Grave, seems to be threatening enough that the guy backs down. Oh, okay, uh, sorry, buddy. Um, I'm just gonna go over here. And wanders off. Have a What's good on? day now. And once again, we avert disaster. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> but yeah, Extinction Curse started off with a fight against drunks. And, oh no! Uh, I accidentally killed one. <laughs> oh no! No, it was no. The, I was the no, one. Wait, that was you. That was fucking. Yeah, it you. was me. I made their head pop with ranged yeah. arm. Yeah, you exploded their head, and my character had to had a lot to answer to to her boss because her boss was in the crowd watching and got a lecture afterwards, and then the whole tent burned down. Which is great. <laughs> Wild. Anyway. Great start. Is this reminiscing over Extinction Curse? <laughs> that that is Extinction Curse. <laughs> Alright, I had Weren't to go outside the... real quick, so I was out of receiver range, so Weren't the two guys That's a great couple confused. too? I think someone mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, they or, were they were a couple. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Remember kids, managed... don't drink. We managed to subdue the other guy, tie him up, question him, and then after we went to go deal with other stuff, the entire circus tent burned down, uh, and there were a lot of casualties. <laughs> oh my god. Oh uh, yeah. Your character's You'd think the police would be better at their job, huh? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, while Grave is still dealing with... Uh, the local bar flies after- what else are you guys doing? Bloopy wants a sip. <laughs> Bloopy wants a sippy. I don't know. Well, let's, uh, give the- let's get the list out to hop. <laughs> no, give no, it'll be great. Alcohol. Um... What's- Back here. Oh, Chosen like Exploring. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah, I kinda am. <clears throat> so Ocho. I don't have any tokens for them. I meant to make them and I forgot. Uh again, I wasn't expecting you guys to head to the club this early. Mm. But, but next session. Uh, yeah. Ocho, um when you come back here, this seems to be it's a lot quieter than the main dance floor. It seems to be some kind of lounge area. And back here, you see a couple of people. Um, but most notably, you see what looks like a bunch of individuals wearing suits and sunglasses. Not suits like your organization, just like, you know, well-dressed sport coats, like black sport mm -hmm. coats and sunglasses. They look like bodyguards. And in the booth over here, there is a particularly 
well-dressed man with dark hair and dark skin um, seated in one of the booths, seemingly right, the right. bodyguards charge. And, um, he would probably be somewhat familiar to you, the face. Okay, okay. So it's like, it's, it's like it's time for a check. Yeah, yeah. it would probably be a check. Um, hmm. I think you can probably do lore cryptocurrency or lore engineering. Either one will work here. Oh, okay. okay. I'll do cryptocurrency. Well, that's a 12. <laughs> Well, th thankfully for this, the check is actually extremely low, because there's no way you can't not know this guy. Um, so... <clears throat> back when, before me wore a suit, um, you were actually a millionaire, and hung around in some uh, pretty sweet and exclusive circles, and you got to rub shoulders with, uh, some pretty high profile individuals not that any of them knew who you were you managed to keep yourself pretty anonymous but mm -hmm. um you got to know some pretty high profile people and among them uh, was a rather ambitious and somewhat eccentric billionaire so even higher than you uh by the name of akash kumar uh, and he is a young entrepreneur from Baharaj. Um, okay. Yeah. And he's a billionaire that's primarily involved in the information and tech industries. So think like Elon Musk, sort of. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Bouncing. And has been using a lot of his own funds to build his own space program. Oh, no. <laughs> this literally yeah. is Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Think Indian Elon Musk, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's very intelligent, ambitious, a little bit out of touch with reality. Um, throws oh boy, his money yeah. at a lot of um interesting air quotes investments. Um He's definitely a globetrotter, but it's kind of unusual to see him and his bodyguard retinue here, of all places. Hmm, okay. Like, um... Tortuga would be considered kind of slumming it for him. But right, the place is yeah. Him to be. Okay. I take that information in peek out of the door over here and then step back over here. I can actually post his uh, character art in Campaign Noma because I actually do have his art. Nice. Uh, I, I just didn't make a token for him yet. Where is he? Guess I'll be next to him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we are pretty close to, uh, to whatever, three hours, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is Akash Kumar. Uh, and I'll type his name. Oh, wow. Well. Skinny oh boy. no, he's hot. <laughs> Definitely gives a pretentious billionaire vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he is like okay, Ocho, you were like filthy rich. This guy is disgustingly filthy rich. <laughs> like Why does he look like a Monhua antagonist? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is he? Um he's actually fuck, what's his name? I forgot. <laughs> See, oh, Ocho was irresponsible in that he really just spent his money on video games and parts for computers and stuff like that. This guy is way more ambitious, but also out of touch. Yeah. Can't believe he bought Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Not saying he I, bought Whooper Will. <laughs> I wouldn't say he's done that, but um, he's that well. Okay, maybe he did, but he's definitely invested maybe. a lot into uh, space exploration program, which, unlike SpaceX with Elon Musk, has not really gotten off the ground nearly as well. Mm. Okay. Because well, yeah, Miss, I mean, Miss Guard hasn't really done SpaceX? space travel. <laughs> 
Miscard doesn't really have much in terms of space exploration and space travel, surprisingly. Okay. Wait, but yeah. wait, but that implies that he's infinitely more cooler than Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, because the bar is in the molten core of the Earth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was just gonna peep back in and go to Finny and Pent and be like, "So, hey." In the room next door, there's a pretty important person. And given everything that we know, might just be someone of interest we're looking for. Might be looking for the same things we are. Oh, you think so? Not so. Yeah. You know, just, just to remind you, my trump card uh, won't be usable for a while. That's That's fair. I still got mine though. Well, now, yours is more of a fruit tool than a surgeon's knife. But I know this fella. Name's a uh, Akash Kumar, and he's really into space. space. So if anything, if the thing we're looking for might be related, it might be interested in that too. Well, if it's the guy just that... up horizons, then maybe. Is it that the guy Spain. that bought Whipper Will? <laughs> yeah, I think I heard something about that. Oh, it's that guy? Uh, seems alright. He is pretty heavily guarded, though. Normally, so... I don't think he'd be in a place like this, but. The fact that he's here makes it seem more likely than not that he's interested in in the book. I mean, he's interested in space and what we're looking for is an artifact related to space, so yeah. That yeah. Makes sense. Good info. Start keep an eye on Maybe eavesdrop. I'll try. I don't know if uh, he'd remember me or not. And I have a feeling with oh, that you... minute, that much security, it might be kind of hard to ease in, eavesdrop you on whatever him. conversation. Why can you? Mm. You could. Mm. Good find person doing something, but it has granted the backfires spectacularly. Could just roll a grave over there, so. Pull him out. Although we need a dolly for that, and I don't think he brought one with us this time. What did we not keep our what did we not keep our dolly in our mode of transportation? Or I could just transform in the middle of the club. <laughs> <laughs> Ill advised. Grave's making money. Wow. You do be. We're just gonna like random, we have like a couple hundred gold after this. As we dog get these people addicted to incredibly shitty addictive drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, um. I so, think yeah. this is probably good. a good place to stop for today, because. Yeah. Yo, Let's wait till he gets yeah. a token before we're doing spice yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I, can get, I can get some tokens for these guys mm -hmm. uh, for next <laughs> session, but uh. Yeah. This is a good place to stop. Uh, you can interrogate or eavesdrop on Mr. Kumar next session. Woohoo! Also, mm, we'll hopefully get the Also, hopefully we'll have Star Color next session. But yeah, hopefully. Oh yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I'm really. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, we won't have Veng line. next session, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're trading the vengeance for a Star Cloud. Yeah. <laughs> You'd rather trade vengeance for Star Clad. I never. I. That's Damn. not what I. First off, that's not what I said. Yo. <laughs> Ouch. That is trying to start I mean, shit in the VC, man. God damn. Yeah, I thought you were a friend, DJ. How could you? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear what was happening. All right. I just said so. We're tra we're tra so we're trading a vengeance for a Star Clad. Okay. There's nothing about preparing it. 
Okay. I prefer if everyone was here. I'm I tagging do them in. I'm tagging them in, bro. <laughs> yeah, totally. Stay away from to walk in the bar and be like, what the heck's happening? <laughs> I keep trying to prepare for potential combat. I actually still have a couple of different encounters set up. It's just, uh, you've been we managing to. Them. You've been managing to dodge stuff pretty well, so <laughs> it's fine. Damn. Even like last one session? Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, especially last, last session. session. Yeah, even last especially session. Especially last session. Oh, wait, well, yeah. No, that makes sense, yeah. Call yeah. last session would have been awkward. Yeah. It would have been against Del Mar. Just a little. Yeah, 146! Yeah, 146. Yeah, a lot of money. Bro is rich. Uh, yeah, so I'll have stuff prepared for next week, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy today. <laughs> Despite de being down one person, I'm still enjoying it. Again. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't become a running trend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, I also I just on that front. Yeah, I, also I would just like to see yeah. what combat is like. Um, it's quite different from 5B. It's very oh. different. Um, your class actually got a bit of a buff, uh, Investigator. Ooh, okay. Um, basically it just means awesome. when you make use of your core mechanic, devise a stratagem, uh, even if you fail at it, you still have something that you can do. Uh, before, there wasn't. You're kind of shit out of luck. Uh, so now yeah. you actually have something. That's uh, why I had the meme of, I have so many actions, what do I do with them? Yeah, no, DG's <laughs> not kidding. Um, if you plan, <laughs> if you uh, make good use of your leads, you're going to have so many actions, you're not going to know what to do with. Investigator <laughs> is a really good class, and it makes me sad people shit on it so much. It just requires you to be very uh, attentive and tactical. Uh, mm. But the only other person whose class has changed is Alex's champion got a bit of a change, but I think you already know <laughs> what the changes are. Yeah, yeah annoying. Yeah, I'm not happy. If, I'm not happy about shield ally nerf, but that's the world we live in. Also, uh, I'm excited for you guys to meet the errant party that you're tracking down. They're fun. Ooh. They're very fun. Also, right. they, they might be a little bit mean, especially with the abilities <laughs> I use. Because, okay, okay. The way I um, make adventurer type characters or PC like characters, I essentially just rip, up, uh, rip off stat blocks that are existing because they usually have class abilities that are already attached to them. So, enemy enemies that are very much kind of like rogues, they'll already have um, sneak attack or deny advantage, or if they're fighter types, they'll have attack of opportunity, or if they're barbarians, they'll have sudden charge or rage. So basically, I just lift class abilities and stick them on the NPCs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah. And there's a couple in there. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, just, you know, uh, they're a little quirky, so... <laughs> uh, I can't wait for you guys to meet them. Anyway, thank you guys for playing. I hope you had fun, and uh, I'll see most mm. of you next week. <laughs> <laughs>